back, VOD people. Uh, now we'll be doing scenario 10 as our second scenario for the day. We have increased to plus three difficulty, and this is actually sort of an insane scenario to increase to plus three difficulty on because we're fighting sun demons and flame demons, which, yeah, scale pretty well with difficulty, to be honest. These are scarier in terms of the way they scale with difficulty than stuff we faced in the last scenario. So the fact that we had an easy last scenario, like, to be clear, I felt like last scenario, based off of the way the outcome was, we were probably something like... 90 percent to win 85 to 90 percent to win like based off of what could have been different outcomes here i would say a realistic estimate i probably expect us to be like 40 percent to win but that that excites me like having a less than 50 percent chance to win is fun and again if we lose here we lose we haven't lost scenario yet and i do generally like to lose around one out of every five to one out of every six scenarios No spoilers, but I cannot wait to see you play the Red Guard with level 5 unlock. I love the level 5 unlock for the Red Guard. I played it once at the end of the last JOTL, actual JOTL campaign, and I enjoyed every minute of it. And I'm looking forward to having it here as well. Okay. Um, so where are we going here? What are we doing? So just to be clear, I think I did do the enhancements on stream, so, or on the VOD, so I don't need to show that. Our city event, we lost 20 collective gold. We just took it all from the hatchet. Uh, in the end, I took 5 here and 15 here, but I... No, initially I took 5 here and 15 here, but I realized it would just was stupid. Hatchet just gets so much gold, and Void Warden gets so little. And I do actually want to get to level 3, I have another item I want to buy on Void Warden that costs a fair amount, so I'd rather just keep the gold there. And we unlocked uh, Scenario 93, and then for Road Event we had no effect. Alright, so... Scenario rules, there's nothing special, we have to kill all enemies. Easy enough. Alright. So... What are we up to here? Sorry. I was trying to think if I should actually be doing this scenario, but whatever, it's too late. So we've got two regular, yeah, we've got our two regular flame demons. So again, to be clear, yeah, going up to plus three difficulty here is pretty insane just because these flame demons, which now have three retaliate range two. Fortunately, I guess it is still range two, so we're kind of okay at level four here. And then this should have innate immobilized now, shouldn't it? I guess it doesn't show it up there, so probably not. Oh, no, not yet. It's next level that they get the innate and immobilize. Yep. All right. All right. So it's level 5 where monster difficulty really jumps. So we've got to be careful about gaining a level. Alright. So then, do we have any things we'd want to bring down here? No, I definitely don't want any of these other cards. For now, Void Warden doesn't really have interesting choices for swapping around cards yet. Here, I definitely don't want multiple attacks. This bottom is okay, but I still don't think I want this either. I don't really want to be pulling any of these enemies. The immobilize is better. I think everything we have there is better. So here, interestingly enough, I don't. I really don't want my AOE combo, right? I mean, I guess I can, because I can just multi-shot with Piercing Bow when I do the AOE combo. In this first room, it's not great, although this would just let us like breeze through this first room if we just AOE combo turn one with Piercing Bow. I mean, not quite, because he's still... Well, yeah. Yeah, this would... Is this worth it? The problem is, what happens if we AoE combo them, and then we run into Elite Flame Demon in the last room? I mean, I guess we have direct damage with the Red Guard. That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah, I think the AoE combo first room just gives us such a good start in this scenario. That it's probably worth it. Normally the first room's pretty easy anyway. But I think this is worth. Alright, so let's just stick with all the cards we have. No reason to change anything. Ah, it's already gotten back to being a little bit laggy. Whatever, nothing we can do about that today. Probably just my computer on the fritz. Okay, so I just want to do this first turn, and I want to go as early as possible. I mean, I guess 12 initiative is actually already good enough. No, because they can move at 8. They can move at 8. So let's actually go at 6. Let's do this. So we're not going to have shield spikes up yet, but that's okay, right? What we're going to do... So we see our starting locations. We're going to have Hatchet here. We're going to have Red Guard here, here. doesn't really matter. And Void Warden, something like, I guess, here. Actually, Hatchet can just be here. Okay. So what I want to do is I just want to move into the center of them, and I want to do one direct damage to all of them. That puts these down to two, and then with the attack twos ignoring all shield on these from the Hatchet, we should just be able to kill both of them by doing our typical AoE combo here which is this and this. Again, we'll find the opportunity to set up our persistent abilities after killing these two flame demons quickly. Okay. So that leaves the Void Warden with some stuff to do, huh? Um...
So I could do strengthen and bless, but we'd be going after this turn. We're, so we're going to use the goggles here anyway, and next turn we're probably just setting up persistent losses. So I don't know that that would be very good to do. Because I wouldn't mind stunning early. I think I can just give the Earth Demon the opportunity to go by going with this and this. Worst case scenario, I mean, like, if it goes this turn or it goes next turn, it doesn't change too much. I don't really care. Like, it's just a regular Earth Demon. It's not the most threatening thing in the world. It doesn't have Earth or anything like that. Yeah, they'll hit for four, but we can do some turn. We can spend a little bit of time healing because we're going to get through this room so quickly anyway. And doing a bottom stun for this turn or next turn is fine. Again, I don't mind cursing myself. I'm going to still go earlier because I would very slightly prefer to stun it this turn than to stun it next turn. But again, I'm kind of open to either possibility, and this seems like a five way to approach this. And again, what the rest of our party is doing is very good here. Just have to really hope these things don't go at three. Okay, so battle interface. Battle goals! Oof. Mr. Battle goals! All right. There's a reason everyone calls me that. Because I never forget them. Not ever. Don't even know how to forget battle goals, to be honest. All I know is grabbing battle goals. Okay, are there traps in this scenario? There are three traps, but most enemies in the scenario, two of the three enemy types in the scenario fly. Well, we literally can't kill enemies, so I guess we're going to try neutralizer and see if we get it. That's a shame. I mean, it can't happen. There are earth demons. Didn't like either of my choices, but that's kind of void work in world. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted, or kill an undamaged monster with a single attack. Well, let's allow none of our allies to become exhausted. That works pretty well in general. I mean, obviously it can fail, but this is still one of the easier ones to do in general in Gloomhaven. Especially when playing solo, because you can just not be an idiot with people and play a bunch of losses. Alright, loot a treasure overlay tile. So there is a treasure, it's going to be in the bottom left, and it's almost certainly the red guard who's going to go grab it. So let's just go with three or fewer cards at the end. That's a really easy one to do in general, especially in a long, difficult scenario on plus three. Again, I think it's more likely that we lose than we win and don't succeed at this. Okay. Let's go. Damn you. That's really uncool. I mean, I played around the eight even. There was one card that they could flip. One card. I mean, it's fine. They're still going to die. It just sucks because I'm doing all this to kill them and they're still getting a free turn. That's... You you feel the impact of RNG more the higher difficulty you play on, without a doubt. Playing on plus three when stuff like this happens, man. Hey, squir Squirrel. Squirrel. Hey, Squirrel. Thanks for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the stream. All right. How uh, about a minute? This is what it is. All right. Flame Demon's attacking... Well, this one's attacking the Red Guard, and this one is attacking the Hatchet. I mean, they only attack for two. They create fire. Whatever. It's, 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 yeah. Let's do Flame Demons. It's first on the Red Guard. Uh, well, we don't have a choice. We actually have to use this. And then on the Hatchet. Two damage to the Hatchet. All right. Well, we get an experience for our troubles. So we're going to do a move four, gain one experience. The shield's not going to do anything, obviously. Redguard is already dead. What? Redguard's not dead. That's because I clicked this the wrong way, but yeah. Um, we're going to move four, consume the fire for one experience. I don't think I care more about keeping the fire for next turn, do I? Because, like, the, the Flame Deans aren't going to use it anymore, but what am I going to... What's my... What am I going to do with fire next turn? Do a multi-target attack when there's one enemy left in the room? Might as well just get the experience here. Okay, I certainly love red guard levels. And then I do this. None of this stuff actually matters in the end, except for the one direct damage on top. And I guess I create fire anyway. Okay, so you take one, you take one, and you take one. Okay, so then Hatchet goes. We're going to do our classic combo. Bottom of Fancy Hat, at plus one to all your attacks this round, and then Disorienting Barrage. Targeting all the enemies. We're going to go ahead and use the Piercing Bow here. Um, during your ranged attack... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, what? Ignore shield values for the entire attack action. Boom. We're going to use the goggles here as well to make sure we don't miss on any of these attacks. This is pretty important. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Do we even need to do this anymore? To use the piercing bow now? 
now that they went after us, can we not just direct damage them out next turn? Doing this plus this? Yeah, we really can. We don't need to use a piercing bow anymore, actually. I guess that was the good thing about them going here. But what's the worst thing that they could do then next turn if we go for this? They do 8 and they don't attack? No, I guess the worst thing they could do is do 30 and multi-target. I guess the multi-target doesn't matter because they'll just die on the retaliate. Yeah, I guess actually this is... Oh no, we won't have shield spikes up, so this actually will be one direct damage. So we won't be killing them. How much shield do they have here, though? They have three shield. So And Hatchet's making attack twos. Mm. We have no additional way of adding one direct, do we? No, we can only do one on bottom. Yeah. I'm just going to pop the bow, then. Bow and goggles. There we go. I don't think there's any way to make it work otherwise. And then we've got Flame Shroud and other things for later. Okay, so we'll do bottom to top, 1-1-6. One, so these are all going to be attack twos, ignoring all shield, muddle with advantage. Okay. Thank God we used the goggles. Thank God that was the Earth Demon. All right, well, we actually picked correct ordering for once. That's pretty amazing. I'm not going to place the muddle because he's just getting stunned. Okay, so they're both dead. Those were some incredibly bad flips, to be clear. <laughs> Look at that. That's like every bad card in our deck. Is it actually? I mean, admittedly, we haven't gotten rid of zeros. So, yeah, that that's actually the worst possible con or distribution of cards in our deck. You could not draw six cards that would be worse than that in our entire deck. We have one minus one, one minus two, one miss, and then we have six zeros still. Those are the worst cards you could possibly draw. For all six? That's actually... That is something. I mean, again, it works, so it's fine. Normally, drawing the worst cards would be nice, because then, well, you don't draw them in the future. Unfortunately, because there's a miss for the reshuffle, it's not quite the case. Okay, so here we're going to gain two experience, setting up Master Influence, and we're going to stun the Earth Demon. I think this still makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he hits for not a significant amount. I don't really care about the one curse that much. I guess I don't need to place the stun. He's going right away. We just need to grab the curse for ourselves. Since we don't have dark, this bottom, we do stun, range three, boom, got him. Got him. Okay, 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 so what now? I mean, I kind of like disarming him. While our allies get set up. We don't need to play shield spikes right now. We can actually just do some attacking. Mm. Mm. So we don't have light. So this would be our bottom attack. But I kind of want that when I go into the next room, don't I? I guess we can disarm him. That's probably better. It's actually pretty free for us to disarm him here. And then we want to go early. So I guess we're probably still playing this here. It's just an additional free attack, just an attack two, since we don't need to move. If we do this, we would go way too late for the disarm to be reliable. I mean, Earth Demons are slow, but not 87 slow and consistent turns. Okay, so then we're just going to move up and do Wicked Scratch, because we need to get in range to buff, to give the attack to the Red Guard. Or, I mean, I guess the Hatchet could move up, but a Hatchet doesn't really want to be next to him. I think it's actually fine for us to move up. We don't really have anything else to do here. This also works out decently because we can use like the fire with Wicked Scratch on Master Influence and we can use the dark that'll be created here to give a free curse. Okay, uh, yeah, let's just set up the favorite then. While our allies are fooling around with this clown, and just do this. Again, creating wind to theoretically get an experience next turn with wind attack. Okay, so red guards up. What are you even doing? I guess, yeah, you're just doing stuff. I, the only thing that would have been annoying is if you did the heal. Okay. So we're going to make an attack two on him. We create ice and dark. And we're going to do another attack two as well. So we're just going to do an attack two and an attack two. Okay. Seven total damage. And he's disarmed. Beautiful. Okay. Hatchet gains two experience. Sets up the favorite. And then we have a move three. Create wind. Hatchet's good at looting? What's this? <laughs> this has nothing to do with being good at looting. And wind is created. All the elements. Okay, so the Void Warden is going to do a move three. 
to here, because we also want coins. Which gives a free curse. Could appreciate those later, certainly. And then we're going to gain one experience, create dark. So we use the dark with this, we create a new dark, and we're going to consume the fire because we don't need the fire for anything, and they can use the fire, but I mean, it goes away. So this is an attack four. Oh, my first chance to get upgraded Wicked Scratch. So attack four plus one, so attack five with advantage. Yeah, this make Wicked Scratch very appealing. Very, very appealing. Okay. So this is six damage. Oh, we didn't need the disarm in the end. Okay. So, I don't really want to run into the next room until I have shield spikes set up. So can we take a turn off to set up shield spikes is the question here. Is anyone missing life? Some people are missing life. It's like me on, on my off turn, I can do healing or I can even do blessing and strengthening for the following turn. I really want to set up shield spikes. What else could we do on the turn we set up shield spikes? We can create light with this to have shield with this when we go in to have like a double shield turn. Yeah, that works pretty well. We can't create light and fire to do this, unfortunately, without playing the bottom shield spikes. And again, I'm built around using the top. So, all right, we set that up. So I'd rather strengthen the hatchet. I mean, I guess this isn't going to be good anymore, and this probably isn't either. Because more likely than not, we're going to hit the favorite into something and then do a repeat shot, which is better than follow through. Range 3 is still good enough, so we can play this and this. So us, we're going to do some blessing and strengthening. We want the strengthen to be for next rounds so we want to go after, which is not too hard to do. I mean, I could do it and get some free healing here, but then I'd be giving up Gift of the Void. Free healing's not that valuable. It's not bad, though. Hmm. No, realistically, I should probably just like throw away one of these cards that I'm not going to want to use in the next room in combat and save Gift of the Void. Okay, here we go. So Hatchet goes first. We're not going to do anything here. Um, I mean, technically, we are going to do something. <laughs> no, 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 we'll leave this for the Void Warden. Well, who needs movement more when we go into the next room? I guess next turn, we're going to have... A move three with this, and then less movement afterwards. But a move three should typically be enough, even from where we are. Oh no, both things are actually the same distance to the door, too. I mean, I guess the argument is if we go here, the Void Warden stays here, whereas the Void one goes here. Yeah, this is slightly worse. We did just pay a lot of gold, but the Void one. Yeah, yeah, let's go there. Let's go right there with the Hatchet. Also, let's be clear, we've got to roleplay the Hatchet a little bit. And the Hatchet is really just a scoundrel in disguise. Like, everyone thinks this is an Inox, but it, it's actually just a human scoundrel. Wearing a hat? Like... See, you think this is an inox, but really it's just a mask, and then the what looks like horns, they're actually just actually attached to the hat. Like it's a hat with fake horns on it to make an inox looking character and just like a fursuit or like I don't know, maybe she just didn't shave for a little bit. And so she's kinda of gotten hairy. But yeah, definitely a scoundrel. Anyone who's played with a hatchet knows that it's actually the scoundrel. Surprise scoundrel. That that was the real Jaws spoiler. The surprise scoundrel. Okay, so here we're gonna create light doing nothing and we're going to activate this gaining two experience okay and so then here we're going to poison ourselves, I think because we just got rid of that anyway so I don't really want the poison on any of my allies who are going to take damage and I obviously can't do it to the Hatchet, because I want the Bless and Strength to be on the Hatchet. Again, Blessing and Strengthening the Hatchet is better, because here we're focusing more on shield and small attacks, here we focus more on big attacks. Okay. Alright, so it's time to bust in. So... The question is, is it better to bust in with this and this, or this and this? I guess it's probably better to bust in like this, just to make sure we have enough movement to reach something. This two movement is just too risky to not hit anything with. Three movement is just so much safer. And disadvantage on all attacks is similar to shield. And this way we just kind of spread the shield over two turns, which isn't necessarily better or worse. It kind of just is. I feel like this isn't going to be very good next turn. It's just going to be an attack three. We'll see, though. We shall see. All right. We're going in with this. Hmm. 
No, we wouldn't. If we went here, we wouldn't be able to give to the void and have range. Because it'd be nice to give to the void before the strength thing goes away. Actually, it doesn't matter because we have, gift, we have uh, master influence up. Okay, so I guess we could do signs of the void top here to give Redguard some more shielding this turn. When does Redguard go in? 14. And do Gift of the Void next turn. Hmm. That's probably fine, actually. Because it'll be easier to know whether I can do Gift of the Void next turn, whereas this turn it's kind of unsure. And stacking shields on the Red Guard with shield spikes is quite reasonable. All right. So, Red Guard's up first. We're going to do the bottom of Healing Sands. Should we do... No, a different initiative order doesn't really work here. Nope. Mm -hmm. All right, what are they all up to? Okay, nothing too scary there. That's fine. Sun Demon was the one I'm most worried about. All right, I don't mind seeing that at all. That's great. Okay, so we have two more movement after making it to the door. These are minus one movements. They have one movement. But I'm going to have a million shield here. I actually don't. I guess they're attacking at plus one, so they're attacking at five. So I don't love getting hit by them, but I also don't want to deal no damage this turn. I mean, hitting Earth Demons is kind of useless, is the thing. They're not really things I want to prioritize hitting, but I still think it makes sense to go up and hit. I would love a world in which I could just hit one of them, but... I guess we actually get to move away from them. Yeah, no, this actually works just fine. This will work just fine. Okay, yep, yeah, so we're going to go there. And we're going to... With the bottom of this. And we're going to attack with Shocking Advance. We consume the light. Gain one experience, and we make an attack three immobilized. That gives us one shield, targeting you. Okay, sure. Okay, and we're done. So then the Flame Demons go. There's no elements for them to mess with, so this doesn't really matter. So they have minus one movement, so normally four, but three here. Okay. One, two, three. One, two. Um, yeah. I guess I have to place this one's trap and then this one's trap. This trap's actually kind of annoying. Uh, traps. You can use different types of traps. All right. Um, man, these. So definitely placing one there. And this one, I guess I'll place the other one under here so that we still have a sort of path. This one goes first, it places its trap there. Then this one goes second, places its trap there. Because here, actually this is where it would, I mean these are also just where they place them because this is actually one closer to that. Anyway, can't place it there. Alright, Void Warden's up next. So this works out surprisingly well. So this is one movement can make it to there. So I'm going to first, well, I guess first I'm going to order the red guard to to do a move, to shield oneself and do a move to self. And do a move to. And go to here. Sorry, this one is actually immobilized here. So this works out just fine. So then this will come here and won't be able to hit anyone. Yep. Who will Hatchet be hitting? Where will Hatchet go, I guess, is the issue then. We'll go here. We don't have increased range. I really want to be hitting the Sun Demon, I think. Uh, this is fine. We can make this work. And so then we do a move two where we give the Hatchet two movement. Yeah, this is fine. So we'll move to here, ourself, or at the bottom of Black Boon. And then one ally within range three, we perform move two. And so Hatchet is actually going to use his boots here to do a move three instead. To go one, two, three to here. This works. Okay. Then... We're done. So now the red guard has one additional shield, by the way. So red guard is actually at two shield for the round. Okay, so hatchet goes. So as hatchet, we're going to make an attack three, range three with the top of center mass. We're going to throw the favorite. We're going to attack the sun demon. The sun demon is definitely the most threatening enemy in the room. Like, theoretically, I guess this could attack kill here, but then the favorite just lost forever. This is much better. So, oh yeah, hold on. No, I just do this correctly. Sit up properly here. Mm -hmm. All right. 
so we throw the favorite at the Sun Demon with our attack 3 range 3. We have Strengthen from the Void Warden, so our attack 3 is an attack 6 with advantage. It's a nice modifier. No, that's not, but at least the Strengthen did something. Alright, so we do 5 damage, and the favorite's stuck in the Sun Demon. And then we have a move 3. Uh, it's creating Earth Matter against them. Now they're creating it anyway. So next turn I can just hop back in with any old move two. I won't be able to pick up the favorite, but that's fine. Yeah, because there's no reason to get attacked by this. So we're just going to move to here and heal ourselves for one and create Earth. Okay, so then the Sun Demon goes. The Sun Demon is just going to move up to here and attack the Red Guard. So the Sun Demon makes an attack for five, six. Jeez, jeez. Ooh. Creates light. And has advantage. No, does not have advantage. Because we had disadvantage on all incoming attacks this round. So, neither advantage nor disadvantage. Still pretty rough. Okay, so, seven total. Yikes. Alright. So we have one shield from ourselves plus one shield from the Void Warden. We're going to use a shield here, and we have to use a shield here. So we get four total shielding here. So we still take three. But the good news is we do do four direct damage to the Sun Demon, which is very good. Very, very good. All direct damage we can get there is very valuable. All right, and then the Earth Demons go, and they have minus one movement. They're creating Earth. doesn't really matter because we've already created it. This one can't move, and this one just moves one like this, or like this, actually. I guess I'd rather him stay there. Okay, and that's the end of the round. We're just playing these two cards, and we'll see what we do with them. Most likely just doing something... Just doing an attack four, shield oneself. Uh, as for us, probably this and this. Try to kill off this. Hatchet has to go before us for that to work. Hatchet is not going to go very early though this round. At 31, that does not quite work. Otherwise we have to get the attack on Earth Demon, which sucks. Or this has to attack, which sucks. Uh, I mean, I guess we could gift the attack here and just try to kill this. Still need to hit a plus one. It's not great. I don't think disarming is better, though. I think we need... There are too many enemies. We have to be killing them. We play these two cards, and we'll see. It's there. Now, Resign Frenzy is just not... We're not really in a good spot for Resign Frenzy because they're not all next to each other. Yeah. All right, let's just go with these cards and see what they do. Okay, so Flame Demon, so you're at 50, that's fine. You're not attacking, which is actually surprisingly decent. Although the Earth is scary, but we can get rid of that. Flame Demons are doing sort of standard stuff. Okay. Okay, okay. So how are we going to make, how are we going to work this out? I guess if we push the Sun Demon away, then we can just gift the attack to the Red Guards. So that works out well enough. Okay, sure. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the Red Guard doing the top of Shield of the Desert. We're going to consume the light, which gives us one experience. This gives us an attack four, push one, targeting the sun demon. Okay, so we do three damage, and we can push him here or here. Don't know if that changes much. I guess I'd rather have him here to make another nicer club of coins. No, I guess the favorite's easier to get here. No, never mind. Push him to there. Okay, and then we have a bottom move to jump shield one self shield one um i guess i'd rather oh i guess i can actually even go here no but then i can't have the gifted attack work out yeah you want to line of sight i'll go this so let's just go to here then this is fine this allows us to do a non-move bottom next turn if we want to although at the same time i guess being here we can actually pull one of these flame demons through the lava so how much is the lava here by the way so here we're on four, so traps are six, so lava is three. It's not bad. Hmm. Same time next turn, I think I can just move one of these down through two of these. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably better. I don't know that it changes much. To in these two spots. I think this is fine. We'll just go there. 
Okay. And so we have one additional shield here. So now the Void Warden goes. So we're going to use the top of Resigned Frenzy simply as a move four. Just really just going to be this to here. And then we're going to use the top of Gift of the Void. Red Guard. Um, should we? Healing Potion here. We still can at the end of his turn. Um, God, I really want it for the last room. Can we get away with not using it here? We're going to be down to seven. How much of these attacks from the... Oh, sorry. The Flame Demons go next. I forgot. Yeah, I got to do them. Um, but yeah, so I... No, this is right now still that I have to decide that. How much are these attacks hitting for? Like two damage, two damage. So we're going to be down to five and then three. Yeah, let's see like Potion here. I don't love it, especially because they can wound, but... Alright, so we'll use our healing potions. Then the flame demons go. They create fire. They already have range, so they can just attack the red guard from there. Each of them are making attack threes. Okay. So three and four, respectively, which is two and three. Yeah, definitely need the healing potion there. Okay. So now the void warden goes. We move to here. We cause the red guard to lose two life. So unfortunately, you can't reach. We poison this. Uh, so the real question is, no, we have to use that earth. We really don't want them having earth. So yeah, we create dark. This gives us an, and then we consume the earth with master influence, targeting here. So this is an attack five with advantage during the sun demon. Okay, that's fine. That's still good enough. All right, we'll do it. All right, favorite goes there. That's dead. I guess that makes our follow-through plan less good. Is it better to attack here? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we probably should have, actually. Oh, that was stupid. I mean, I guess the hatchet wouldn't have advantage, and we failed to kill, then the red guard's just dead. So I don't know. I guess this is probably the safer thing to do, anyway. Um, I think I want to stay on a potion something back, because I have dark, and using lure of the void top next turn on this, just putting it making it go one, two, three, or I guess one, two, three, realistically. First of all, this will actually um, satisfy my battle goal, but it'll also just be decent. One, two, three. I mean, any any combination of these things. So I need to get an initiative that's 40 or lower back with a bottom. So I'm already in range. Do I have a bottom that I could use that would do something at those initiatives? No, I really don't. That is, it's kind of... Welcome to the Void Warden. Could I run the risk of being slightly greedier and do this? And assume that they won't go that early? I mean, they did just play the 40. It's reshuffled. I guess even if they do this, it's not the end of the world, right? And this is so nice to do in bottom. To stun the other one. Yeah, I think that's got to be worth it. All right. So let's let's get this back, actually, with our stamina potion here. Boom. Okay. So the hatchet goes now. So we have a move, default move two or move one, loot one doesn't change much. Um, I think I want to get further into the room for sure, get closer to this. But I guess it's actually not any closer to that. So no, actually, I actually don't necessarily want to do that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't change anything for their flamethrower pattern either. And then I'll just make an attack three, range three, targeting number four, I guess. If I do plus one damage here, then he'll actually die. He won't quite die, but he'll be pretty close to dead. I mean, anyway, I think it makes sense to try to eliminate an enemy. So we'll just make an attack through range three, targeting this flame demon, or this earth demon, sorry. Yeah, we got a plus one. If this hadn't blocked this, actually, then it would die. Oh, but I guess they're healing anyway, but that's another reason that it made sense to hit here. So here they heal for three, and they don't do anything because they have no, I mean, they don't do anything because we consume the earth, sorry. All right, and there's no more sun demon. The sun is gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we'll be short resting here. Same with here, as much as I would love to long rest. Mm. <sighs> it's the it's the classic, right? Losing repeat or center mass is really bad here, but if we reroll and get repeat shot, it's just worse. Repeat shot and retrieval are the only things I can reroll into that would be worse. So I think technically it is correct to reroll. 
please not repeat shadow retrieval. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's also a good card, to be clear. Again, like, half of my deck I would rather lose before that, but that's still definitely better to lose than center mass. Not, I guess, by a ton, but still. Okay, that's an easy loss. Okay, here, 58. Do our things. So us, we have fire here. Does that change our motivation for how to live our life? I kind of like to do some healing. But I guess just shielding is as good as healing here. There's no real easy way to use pull and... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, so if we do the, the immobilize thing again, we can actually make this work pretty well, right? If I'm, oh, but then I can't do the moving both of them thing. But I can if we go... I should have got a different card back. I should have got the late, super late initiative Gift of the Void then. Damn it. I hadn't thought through everything we would do here. I guess I didn't know what cards we would get to keep. What I would have liked to do is if I'd gotten Gift of the Void back, I could go at whatever the 80-something that Gift of the Void is. I could immobilize them to skip their turn here and then get both of them next turn as well. I mean, the risk is then they do ranged attacks. All right, well, so that's not going to work. So with that out of the question, what can we do? So if we jump here, make them have disadvantage. We're not quite there to killing them, but we're pretty close. And then next turn we can use this early to finish them. So we have to do this and this. The problem is... Our life total is really rough here. We don't need this one. We want this one. Because this works because we get one direct damage from this, and we get one direct damage from them attacking into our shield. Unfortunately, it's only two. But they won't attack into our shield unless we play this. I think this is fine. Also, if they do like a nonsense turn, like their line attacks or the thing where they don't move, we can just theoretically do things here. Maybe even heal ourselves and just use this bottom as an attack, something like that. There are a lot of reasonable options. Okay, so this is kind of the worst case for the hatchet, is when the favorite is on the ground behind tough enemies, because we don't really get to do much. But, I mean, all right, no, we're going to be fine this turn still, because we can just do Fancy Hat, Sorrenting Barrage. Still just doing an attack two and two targets is fine. It's going to get worse, though, next round. All right, so that is exactly the thing from Flame Demons I really, really, really didn't want to see. That is the absolute worst case. That is the absolute worst case. That is the by far worst thing they could do. <sighs> okay. And there's not really any way around this, I think. So they're going to have fire no matter what. We actually can't go next to them anymore, which is fun. This just became a catastrophe. I don't even know how we manage this. This is so bad. I'm just trying my best not to mention the possibility of this happening. I guess they did only have five cards left in their deck, so it was a one out of five. Because we can't go next to them because of the fire consumption. We can't avoid having fire either, unfortunately. We have no way of getting rid of it, so it's just there. And the multi-target wound is obviously quite bad as well. Everything about this is really bad. Really, really bad. I can't pull them... I mean, I, I just die if I go there, to be clear. I take four direct damage, and then their attacks and wound. Yeah, so I guess in the end we're just going to be doing something slightly different here. We're going to use the top of Healing Sands, gain one experience, and heal ourselves for four. I'm not at max HP the hell so i was at uh, five was it yeah i was at five yep because i took five damage and then i took two more so I, i'm not going to mess around with that health thing down there anymore i'm just going to have to keep doing it up there so i'm going to heal for four and then i'm just going to make an attack one wound and i guess if we hit this with an attack one wound it should die before it ever goes again from the damage it takes down here. I mean, it takes seven down here, plus one, eight, plus one for the moon, nine, and yeah, it's disarmed as well, so. I mean, it's close, I guess. It's not quite, but if we get a plus one, basically. Okay, so let's attack you. Okay, well, that's the same as getting a plus one. So this takes two. 
It's wounded. And we're done. Hat. Oh, I forgot. We've also got this. Yeah, that's definitely dead. All right. Well, we're going to do fancy hat at plus one to all our attacks. We're going to do an attack one. Multi-targeting here on both of you. Both getting muddles. That doesn't really matter. Bottom and the top. Oh, wrong deck as usual. Yeah, this lightness is brutal. Okay. Yep. So here we go. Bottom and top. Okay. Not bad. So two damage here. One, two, three, four damage here. Both muddled. I'm not going to bother placing those. Uh, whatever. I guess I can. There's, I guess, a world in which I'm not doing this stun because who knows what happens after this nonsense. All right. Uh, so this one actually does have to move up one to get two targets in range three. This one doesn't need to move at all. They consume the fire. They don't do anything with it because no one's adjacent to them. They attack at minus two. So their attacks are for one each time. This one first on the red guard and then here. And then this one, uh, it's actually both on the red guard first. Yeah. So red guard, void warden, red guard, void warden. Attacks on red guard are for one. The attacks on void warden are for two because of the poison. So red guard, so one damage, void warden, four damage. I have no cards in hand to lose. Wow. That is so bad. Now I have to get a minus one on one. Otherwise, I'm going to have to lose to negate the wound. Even if that happens... I mean, just losing two cards from Discord. God, this... Well, everything was going fine, and then this turn. This is just, just piling it on. To be clear, this is why I would actually have an Iron Helmet on the Void Warden. All right. Uh, next one on the Red Guard... I just got like hope for a miss. They do have a curse in their deck. Uh, so I guess, yeah, there's two damage there and wound. <sighs> That's so insane. All right. That couldn't have been drawn on the red guard, of course. I didn't do the order wrong, I think. No, it was red guard, void warden, red guard, void warden. Yeah. All right, please just miss. Well, that's the end of this scenario. All right. Uh, two cards from discard. Certainly need healing. And that's just out of here at this point. Stack so well. <sighs> Maybe we get rid of this and just keep the multi target healing to remove these wounds. <sighs> that's so bad. This is just such a disastrous turn. I can't believe that flip. I mean, this into crit and plus one. I mean, melee plus zero and plus one is the same thing there. But... Man, man, man. All right. All right. Well, we're up on the Void Warden. We got on to two. Um, I'm going to use the top of Lure of the Void, gain one experience, and consume Dark call to force him to do a move three. And do one, two, three, just to clear out both these traps to make a bit more space. It's a shame, because I'm getting my battle goal, but I don't think we're going to beat the scenario at this point, because the Void Warden's going to be so low on cards now, going to the last room. But who knows? Maybe the, the Red Guard and the Hatchet can clutch it out. We'll see. We'll see. There's always... Where there's a will, there's a way. And then I'm just going to stun this Earth Demon up here. And we get another curse. So we don't consume Dark on that one, because I did need the Dark additional for the additional movement to kill the other guy. Okay. Jeez, this lag is getting... Really brutal. And then he stunned and does nothing. That's the end of the round. So, these are discarded. I have to short rest here, and I have to keep the two target heal, and I can't reroll. If I long rest, I lose my wound. Maybe it's safer to do that, but there's still so many enemies left. I don't even know what our allies are doing at this point. We don't have our boots, so we would have to... I mean, we can't even make it. We have to do a move three to here after, like, attacking that. Yeah, so something like this. And this. No, I guess I'd rather keep my slightly earlier initiative for afterwards. So doing a move three like this allows me to... Then next turn, use Retrieval to pick up the favorite before attacking. Okay, so what are we doing here? So I have no way of healing myself anymore. So I'm going to keep ticking from this wound. I, I just have to take the one out of eight here. 
So basically the disaster here is if I hit the two target heal. I just, I have to short rest here, I think, for myself and for the red guard. If I long rest, it's slightly safer for the void warden, but then the red guard is also just taking down from the wound. And we also have a character not doing anything for the round. I mean, I guess here, what we're doing for the round is just healing, but we're going to have to heal the red guard next round anyway, if we long rest. And we're not getting anything back from the long rest. I think we have to short rest here. And the one out of eight is just, if we lose the multi-target heal here, we can't actually re-roll. So we just lose the scenario on this. It is a one out of eight to lose the scenario. Okay. <sighs> because we're at two life, if we would have to reroll there, we would go down. We would go down to one, and then we would have to lose a card to negate the wound, which just wouldn't work. I mean, we would still have to do it, but that would just be another card loss, which would have been truly a disaster. Okay. So this is the top, and. I guess if we go immobilize those two with shield spikes up now, then, and we give additional shield, then they're close to death. Oh no, we can't give the additional shield here. So we wait a turn to do that, I guess is the argument. So then let's just go with this for early initiative. I think early initiative actually is useful here so that we don't somehow die. Oh, maybe it's not so important. We'll see. What is everyone else doing? So I suppose us, we can just disarm the uh, Earth Demon, or we could even just do an immobilize attack on it. How good would that be? What I'd really like is to have fire for next turn, but I can't make that happen. I mean, they can theoretically make that happen, but I cannot. If I do an immobilize, I could just do a bottom attack as well. Did I create light last turn? No, I didn't create any elements last turn. I mean, I actually, no, I did create fire last turn, but... Uh, no, but I need this top next turn. I need... need... I mean, otherwise, I could go do this this turn without the bonus shield. Now we only have one. This just doesn't work. I need the two from the hatchet, or from Red Guard, yeah, from Void Warden, and then the one additional direct damage on the bottom here. If I had items back, I, it would be different, but I do not. So the question is, should we do this top or this top on the Earth theme? And I guess just to, they did, ooh, yeah, there is actually Earth, right? They created that and I forgot to make it. If it doesn't multi-target range attack, it's just too bad for me. So accordingly, I should probably do the disarm. Okay, so then what am I doing on bottom here? So I have to keep this, I guess. If I get closer, I can even do this next turn with this. So we could even just do this here as just a default bottom to move a bit. And then we'll still be, we can still be in range to get healed the move, so that's fine. Okay. Oh, but we've got to be careful about where we're going. That's fine. If we move to here, Hatchet can still just do the bottom loot on retrieval to pick this up. Yeah, this works. Okay, Flame Demon's at 49, Line Attacks. Um, okay. <laughs> so bad. All right, well, anyway, let's begin by making <coughs> an attack which creates ice and dark, targeting the earth demon. We take one damage from our wound. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not getting the bonus shield next turn, then, because I can't go here, because Hatchet actually has to go there. It doesn't work. If Hatchet doesn't go there, I mean, I guess, if Hatchet, no, but if Hatchet goes here, Hatchet gets hit by the Lion Attack by the Flame Demon, and I really don't want that to happen. I mean, there's, I don't want to take free attack threes here when we're all so low. So I guess we're just moving here then. One, two, one, two three. Yeah, with the jump next turn at six initiative, we have the jump boots. Yeah, we can still do the thing. Yeah, we can still do the thing. Okay. Void Warden's up, we take one from our wound, down to one. <laughs> Going to do the top of Close to the Abyss, healing myself and Hatchet. Or sorry, healing myself and Void Warden, just removes my wound and, po wound and poison. Oh my god. And doesn't do anything to the Void Warden. I mean, doesn't do any healing, but then heals the Hatchet for two and removes the wound. And then I have a move three here. Sorry, did I forget? Oh no, these were great. Yeah, so I can use the Dark. It's probably fine to... If I save it, I can do this next turn without cursing myself. 
basically, would I rather have a curse in their deck and a curse in my deck, or neither? I think I'd rather have a curse in their deck and a curse in my deck. So, yeah. Let us... So we can't go to any of these spots. We can't go to this spot. I don't really want to move up there, I think. So I think we're just staying where we are. But we're giving them a curse. Consuming the dark. Okay. We don't get a bless. It's only allies that get blesses, by the way. Hatchet's up. So we're going to do an attack three, range three, with repeat shot, targeting here. Okay. That's nice. I don't need to get rid of it. And then I'm going to move and create wind. The earth demon's up to... I'm just attacking, sure. So do move three. One, two, three to here. And create wind. All right. Earth demon's disarmed. Does nothing. Flame demons don't do anything because they just attack in a line without moving. So like this and like this or like this, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we just have to hope that the flame demons do not go at... Basically, well, there's honestly a lot of things I really don't want the flame demons to do here. But I sort of need the flame demons not to do... They're 8 initiative where they don't attack, they're 3 initiative where they go before me, or they're 30 initiative where they multi-target. The 30 would be the least bad of these three things, but yeah. Because our turn is really simple here. We go 1, 2, 3, 4 to here, and then we immobilize both of them and give ourselves shield 1. And the Void Warden is going to give us one more shield, as well as, I guess, stunning something just in case. Stunning that Earth Demon in case it's not dead. I guess if the Earth Demon is going to most likely die, maybe we don't. We can just do this, take this opportunity to heal. I don't really think I want to be using the Gift of the Void top these days because everyone's so hurt. I think the healing is going to be a bit better. Oh, but I actually have to move here to get in range to do gift to, to do the shield top. In that case... No, I want to keep a good initiative for after this. I think I'll just move with this. Theoretically slash stun. Who knows? Okay, so here we're going to pick up the favorite. And we have wind, so we can just use this attack. 35 initiative is early enough to beat the Earth Demon, which is what we're planning on attacking. Theoretically, we can attack a Flame Demon if we need to. I guess not before they're 30. Hmm. If they do 30, it would be good to kill one of them. Yeah, let's just play it safe here then play it as safe as possible. This is going to give us a worse next turn, but next turn is less important than this turn. 24. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Alright, so we're going to do a move forward at the bottom of Flame Shroud. We're going to use our jump boots to get jump on the move. Earth Demon, what are you up to? Nothing. Yeah, flamethrower attack. Sure. 1, 2, 3, 4 to here. And then we're going to use the top here. We're going to create light. Do shield one, immobilize, target all adjacent enemies. Immobilize here being significant because it keeps them from moving away from us. Okay. Void Warden's up. So Void Warden, I'd love to stun that flame earth demon. I, I have to pray that the hatchet kills here. Um, because I have to move to give the shield here to make this all work. So I'm going to do the bottom of freeze the soul as a default move. I'm going to go to here, so on the off chance this doesn't die, it can't flamethrower pattern both of us. I know it's going to meet, lead to me needing to do more movement afterwards, but there is a world in which Hatch doesn't kill here. Then attack 6. So I'm going to move there as a default move, and then I'm going to give the uh, Red Guard one additional shield and two movement. The two movement doesn't matter. Okay, so Hatchet is going to do a move 1, loot 1. Just going to take a step back to here. back and then I'm gonna do an attack three range three targeting the earth demon here there goes nothing I mean I was using the favorite obviously sorry I, I should have mentioned that I, I knew I was but this still doesn't kill I should have been more clear but as I said attack three range three but this still does not kill and that is disastrous because that's gonna come hit the void warden I didn't have goggles, otherwise I would have used them here. Or 2 out of 16. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, no, you missed, actually, basically we're in such a bad spot because of what happened two turns ago. 
two turns ago was the turning point from the scenario going well for us to the scenario going downhill, and this was really bad. This was a 2 out of 16 or 1 out of 8 for it to happen, so it's not unbelievably unlucky, but it's still very unfortunate, because a miss or a minus 2 fails to kill here, which are the only things that fail to kill. There was no way to play around this, unfortunately. And the worst part, is, again, is that it is the Void Warden that's getting attacked here, and there's now nothing we can do. I could have used the Invis Cloak on the Void Warden, but again, I don't think I'm supposed to there to play around that. It's unfortunate because we had to lose two cards earlier to negate damage on the Void Warden, and now we're about to lose a third card to negate damage, so... Yeah. Okay. Well, we're done. Uh, so we have two shield here, one from the Void Warden, one from our ability. Also, hey, General CGO. So both these are going to attack us with disadvantage. Their attacks are for two, they create fire. Or sorry, for three, but with disadvantage. We have two shield. Sure, yes, of course. Very important to get the curse on this, an attack that was going to deal one damage. Yes, <laughs> excellent disadvantage attacks. Uh, this has been a... I mean, we were pretty lucky last scenario, whereas here, this is just... All right, they each take two damage from our two shield, and the second attack actually gets through for two damage, impressively enough, while also still managing to draw out the curse. And the curse was kind of the one hope we still had for the Void Warden actually making it to the third room of the scenario. We're going to go into this third room with two, two characters, essentially. Okay, Earth Demon goes, consumes any element of our choice, and makes. So do we want... No, we don't want fire next turn, so let's just get rid of that fire. Consume fire... Great Earth. Okay, can never hit two targets. Can only hit the Void Warden. Is there a sort of tiebreaker for this sort of thing where they want to move closer? I don't think there is, right? I wonder about that. Because technically there are two different spots this can move to. It's not something I've ever thought about before, because typically I've always tried to just do what's best for monsters. I've never thought about like how, you, how ambiguity works for stuff like this. But... I mean, I think I have the choice between putting him in either of these two spots. I mean, regardless, I guess I'll put him there, because I'd rather him not be next to. Ambiguous to player's choice. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, well, we'll put him there. I don't think it should change much. This allows the hatchet to make a range attack on him next turn. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Okay, well, miss or a curse, miss or a curse, miss or a curse. No, never. Never. All right, that's another lost card. Uh... I mean, I need healing. I actually, like, all these are really bad to lose, to be clear. I guess I'm just losing my upgraded Wicked Scratch at this point, which is sort of insane because it's an attack 5. But this will be good later for a top and is good now for a bottom, and I kind of just need the initiative and the movement here. Also, theoretically, this gives me a chance to at least contribute one small thing in the last room. Unfortunately, we never got rid of this trap wall either. These are damage traps, so 6 damage. <laughs> yeah, with our health. Okay. Okay. All right, well, we're going as early as we can. So the only thing that the Flame Deans can do that's bad for us here, the only thing is if they go at three initiative and attack, because then they'll move away and I won't be able to execute them. If they do the eights, I don't care. They place some traps. I mean, I guess them placing traps is slightly annoying, but whatever, I'll live with it. The three initiative would be very bad for me here. I'm just going to play my cards. I don't really have a lot of other choice in this matter. And I'm just going to play my cards. I can't beat the three initiative anyway. There's nothing I can do about it. I just have to hope they don't do it. 30. Okay, that's fine. All right, red guard. Create light. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage. Loot one. You're dead. I'm going to turn on the lights in here for a second, actually. Also stretch my back. I got to go get the other light, actually. Give me one second.
sorry. Good catch. Thank you. Sorry, I realized I was muted. Um, yeah, so basically, I, I did the attack two. I would have loved... I did the default attack two here. Um, I would have loved to draw a curse there, because the hatchet would kill him anyway, but whatever. Um, and I'm gonna... I was discussing who I should do the heal two on. Sort of, I'm not... I only have two... I, I have six turns left total on the Void Warden, right? So I'm not really going to contribute in the last room. Which is also why I think we can't win anymore on plus three. Um, I don't think having two characters in this last room, which is the hardest room of the scenario by far, at plus three difficulty is possible to beat it. Basically, we're going to make it to the last room, and then we're going to get to sort of throw out probably, like, play two cards, I think. Like, play two turns probably in the last room. Something like that. And that's it. And one of them is going to be Resigned Frenzy, which should be decent. One of them hopefully should be Resigned Frenzy, I guess I should say. Um, so, but my point is I don't think my health matters too much because I don't plan on a sustained fight with the Void Ward in the last room. That being said, I guess it doesn't make sense to heal either of the other characters because the Red Guard has a heal for self and we'll get two from a long rest and Hatchet will get two from a long rest. So we might as well heal ourselves anyway. Uh, didn't get to use my boots, which is unfortunate because every ounce of movement here is going to matter. I guess I could have default attacked here and just moved like that. I actually should have. Yeah, that was, but it's too late. I didn't actually think about it. Because I was just thinking, yeah, I need the healing. But neither of my allies need the healing, and I'm not sure the healing was important on me. So realistically, what I should have done here was just punch with this and then move with this. Okay, flame demons are... Oops, flame demons are gone. I mean, all these things are gone. So there's just the hatchet who's left. Hatchet, we're just going to do one of these moves to here. We have to go back, not for the coin, but because that's actually where the favorite was. Which we'll certainly need the next room. Okay. So this is a triple long rest. Whew. Brutal. Really just brutal. I mean, everyone else is doing fine. No one else has had to pitch cards, but... Eh. So we're like two pretty full characters going in. Uh, we're also going to fail this battle goal, because the Void... Even if we beat the scenario, Void Warden is 100% exhausting. Before it ends. Okay, so both of them heal for two. Mm -hmm. And we all get to choose cards to lose. Messy Shay. Oh. To Vori Uh huh. I assume she was doing, like, I don't know, picking something up for me or giving me something. I don't really know. But then I realized she was actually just stealing chapstick. So, lip balm. No, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. Thanks. Morning, Gripe. How you doing? Hey, Altigan. Altigans. I'm doing well. Uh, I mean, I was doing better before, like, three turns ago. We just had a really bad set of three turns. We had to lose three cards to negate damage on the Void Warden in three turns. Two in a single turn because of a really unfortunate monster flip and then really unfortunate monster modifiers. Um, but, yeah, I mean... You feel it more when you're playing on plus three, because there's a lot of pressure to perform. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, regardless, though, I am uh, I am doing well. I mean, I'm. it's a good day. It's a Friday. Things are turning out well in the election. I don't like to... I don't like to talk about political stuff too much on stream, because I think people just don't really care, but obviously my political leanings are pretty clear. Um, and if that alienates people, so be it. That like I, I don't care about bringing up my political leanings because of alienating people like people who that would alienate I don't really care and I know this isn't a rant I should go on I mean it, I I don't want to rant about politics because I just don't want to talk about politics on a Gloomhaven stream I don't think it's super relevant but I don't care that people know my political allegiance I guess or my political leanings I mean anyway I live in France and in France I would be a member of the Green Party so it's kind of completely different anyway but the election being from the U.S. originally obviously. The later in the week it's gone, the better I felt about the situation. <laughs> so that's been a bit of a relief, and it's Friday, so I'm yeah, I'm 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 having a great day to be honest. Again, aside from having lost three cards in three in over the course of three turns to negate damage on a character, and I really after the first room and the beginning half of the second room, I really believe we would beat this on plus three, but um, in going into the last room now, I'm not so sure. All right, so what are we getting rid of here? I guess I don't need this healing anymore, to be honest. Like I said, I don't really care about healing myself, and they're all going to be at full. Uh, okay. 
so what are we getting rid of for the red guard? No worries, Dorf. Or Hatchet. Uh, well, we don't have the Piercing Bow anymore, so the AoE combo just sucks. So let's get that out of here. I mean, I guess this is direct damage, but I don't think we're really going to be in a situation to use this for this amount of direct damage going into the last room, even if that is kind of decent here. No worries, Dorf. How are you doing, by the way, Altagans? Sorry. Look at these initiatives. 6, 10, 12, 13, 16. <laughs> just, you love to see it. Yep. Bouncy one. Absolutely. Um, I guess just this at this point. I, I would like to keep this because the move 6 jump gives me some hope of making it to the chest. I think I just have to accept that I'm never getting... Well, alright. Yeah. Alright, fair. Okay, so how to put this. Basically, from here, we have two different approaches going forward into this scenario, right? We can either accept that there's a high probability we don't beat the scenario and try to get the chest, or we can try to beat the scenario. I hate giving up on a scenario. It's just, it's, you know, it's unpalatable. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to try to beat the scenario. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. I'm not sure how realistic it is that I can beat this last room with mostly just two characters with a very small contribution from the Void Warden. But I choose to believe. Basically, I bring this up because if I accept that it's very likely I lose the scenario, then I should sort of head sort of hedge around getting to the chest. In which case, Desert Knight's actually very useful because I'm going to want this move six jump to make it to the chest. But if I'm going to try to beat the scenario, this top is just... I mean, I guess it is very good against Elite Sun Demons, too. IMO scenario and everything else. Yeah, yeah, I agree, in general. Uh, I guess we could just get rid of this anyway, to be honest. Though, I think this actually makes more sense no matter what. I mean, yeah, sure, this sort of can be an insane loss, but it's difficult to make this loss actually work since we don't have movement on these top things. Or if we like get disadvantaged, it, it contra uh, contrasts with that. So... The enemies we care most about shield retaliating aren't going to be next to us. This, Admittedly, both the enemies make these types of elements, so the top does get a bit better. But I kind of want every other of these cards. All, anything that gives direct damage is really useful in the scenario with Flame Demons left. So, And this is actually very good against Elite Sun Demons, so I think it actually does make sense to get rid of this regardless. Okay. So we're ready to go. We've got our healing. Um... One, two, three. I don't love ending. I'm pretty sure I've only ever seen Shield of the Desert's Lost be used against bosses. Yeah. That makes sense. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I think we're going to go for a two turn plan here, which is going to be heal ourselves here and do our little jump over. Where are you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no, that's not the same card. I was like, wait, that's the same card. No, no. Basically what we want to do, so I'm going to have to draw the enemies back, is the realistic way that I'm going to win this fight. I don't think I can win this room by running into the enemies. I think I have to draw them back through here. The truth is that we don't actually have jump on Hatchet or Void Warden, right? So we can't get past this trap wall. Accordingly, we need to draw the enemies towards us. So, if I do it over two turns, though, it sort of sucks. What if I do one, two, th but if, if I end up here, I just get hit by too many things, I think. So I think what I'm supposed to do is do a move to jump here, and then next turn I do my move four with the jump boots going one, two, three, four to there, which should draw the enemies back a fair amount. And heal myself up here. We're going to kind of waste a little bit of time here, which is unfortunate because time is a very valuable commodity for the Void Warden. Um, so I'm just going to play this and I think this here to throw this away and just this to move up a bunch. I suppose I'd rather go later than earlier in case of... Somehow they get in and want, in, in case somehow enemies in that room are able, able to get in and multi target in here. Okay, so we still have the wind, so we can theoretically use that. So let's create wind, and I don't really see retrieval being good anytime soon, so we can probably just get rid of that here. And sort of same thing, move up. Hey, Gripe, and others in chat, without spoilers, what do you think of GOTL scenarios? I'm still working through the campaign, my group just isn't meeting enough for me. Oof. I didn't, in general, love the JLTL scenarios because they were often a little bit too much... I don't want to say gimmicky, because that's kind of pejorative, but too specific. A lot of 
elements in many scenarios are designed to specifically make certain aspects of certain classes look good or feel good or be appealing. It's sort of like a beginner puzzle for like, can you figure out the ability that you have on your class that works for this scenario? And, oh, or do you have an ability which is good at hitting objectives? Oh, uh, do you have feeling? I don't know. So it, I didn't like that. Otherwise, they were okay. I, they weren't really my cup of tea. I definitely prefer base Gloomhaven, but I think in general people like them a lot. But yeah, I, I think basically what General CGO said there is probably the most common appreciation, most common approach. Okay, anyway, let's go. So red guard, we do a move to jump. We gain one experience and we heal ourselves for four, which again, we have to do up here, not down there because down there it bugs out. Void Warden has a move four. Four to there and does nothing else. And Hatchet does a move three that creates wind. I guess we should have maybe saved that because I really wanted a late initiative next round to let the enemies come up and hit them. So it was probably actually better to not create wind and just do that next round. That was a bit of a mistake, actually. Oh well. That's fine. All right, so we know exactly what we're doing. I think I'm probably just going to throw this. Uh, I guess there's a world in which enemies hit me, so I should maybe just play a shield card anyway. Just in case. Okay, so as for us, I want to go as late as possible. I want to play, yeah, I mean, like, possibly a wind attack. It's a shame that I'm going so early. I should have kept the 60. It would have definitely been much better. As for us, same thing as, uh, I mean, I guess we could give the red guard shield or even move the red guard a bit after the red guard does his thing to get the red guard back further, draw enemies up more. Yeah, that's probably more likely to be useful than this. I can, I can still do this bottom here since I'm going to rest anyway. Yeah, that's fine. To give myself a little bit of healing. Okay, so red guard's up first. I'm going to do a move four with the bottom of flame shroud. I'm going to use the wing shoes to add jump to this movement. So one, two to the door. All the setup. Hmm? That's it? Thought there would be more. We have a chance? So you're saying there's a chance. Is that really it for three characters? From as they're so far. Okay, okay. So you're saying there's a chance. We could actually maybe beat the scenario. No, I need you to move. All right, well, you're moving at least. You're not the ones I want to fight first, though. Ugh. I mean, this kind of works out because the earth demons are going to come through the traps and we can maybe fight them. Right, maybe it can work. Maybe it can work. I really didn't want these things not to move, though, to be clear. But maybe this is fine. Um, okay, so then I have my two additional movement. Oh, sorry, Dwarf. I just see you now. Uh, yeah, take care, Dwarf. I'll hopefully see you next week. Have a nice weekend. Okay, so now the Void Warden goes... I mean, in the end, moving someone didn't change anything, but we wouldn't have had anything in range to attack anyway, so it's fine. Uh, oof, good luck. Sorry. Heal myself for two. Let the Red Guard move back very slightly. I don't know that it matters too much. I think we're just sort of doing nothing next turn. Well, how much do these Earth Demons move, actually? So the Elite has four movement. That's actually very good for us. One, two... No, actually, I want him to stay there so that I can attack it. And move back. Yep, so I just do nothing with this. This is fine, though. This is fine. All right, so them, they do heal three range threes. There's nothing to heal. Hatchet goes. Nothing to attack. We don't gain experience with that. I guess I would like to move up to here. Since that is going to be there, I can attack it next turn before moving back. Like I said, good luck. All right, flame demons and earth. Flame demons do nothing. Earth Demons have minus or plus one to move. So I guess maybe this can work out. One, two, three, four. One, two, to there. Because I do really want them to go through this trap wall. So them moving up is good. That does clear the path for us. Okay. 
Alright. I have nothing to gain by long resting on the Void Warden here, but I do need to long rest on the Void Warden just because I need all the time I can while the enemies come up. So we're going to long rest there. Um, hmm. So I guess a disarm is good here, isn't it? Because then I'll disarm this. It'll still come up, trigger the trap. But, I mean, I could pull it through the trap as well. Regardless, this works. Because theoretically, there's a world in which I pull it through the trap and then just move away. Otherwise, more likely than not, I'm going to disarm it and just do nothing with the bottom. Okay, so as for here, so we have the favorite ready. So let's launch it with this. And then I think I'll stamina potion here, most likely. And get back, probably just like fancy hat bottom, and throw a repeat shot afterwards. Oh no, the Earth Demons are not moving. Alright, well, so much for disarming. I mean, fortunately that's fine, I guess, because I've got the pull prepared. Alright, so Hatchet's actually up first. So I'm going to use the bottom of Fancy Hat to add plus one to all my attacks this round. I'm going to attack with Center Mass and attack three, range three, targeting the Elite. I will use the Favorite here, because I've got enough pay payoffs for having the Favorite in a target. I think it makes sense to get it in here and just start making attack fives and fours. Okay, no reason to use Goggles for this, though. He says... That's sort of insane. The the Hatchet's Draws in this scenario have been atrocious. Earlier, for people who've tuned in recently, we drew the first six cards of our deck with the Hatchet, and they were the six worst cards in our deck. We drew the minus one, the minus two, the miss, which are both the only minus one, the only minus two, and the miss, and then three zeros, without a single positive card and six draws. And then here, this that minus two there led to Void Warden having to lose a card. A minus one or higher, and we killed the Earth Demon, which instead got to attack the Void Warden and caused her to lose a card. And then here... It's just been incredible. Again, it doesn't typically make sense to use goggles, except on attacks which like are going to kill, or are multi-target. <laughs> hey, Alagans. Altagans, thank you very much for the subscription. I do really appreciate it. Thanks for trying to cheer me up on these flips. I I know you're, you're trying to be kind and make me feel a bit better. And that, that does cheer me up a bit, admittedly. Because I did just miss an attack 7 on a scenario which is already going to be very close. I don't think it made sense to use the goggles there, though. Again, like, opening damage on enemies, which I'm going to have plenty of time to kill anyway while these things move up, is not typically where you want to be using your goggles. It's more important to have them for, like, I need this attack to kill this target and play around that. Okay. Um, anyway, the favorite is in him. I am going to go ahead and just dismiss this and then say I'm going to potion it back. Because this just gives me another turn right away, which is pretty good. Otherwise, I miss out on a turn here. This is just a way of gaining an additional turn, and it's a good turn, too. Goggling on any single target attack of six or more is very tempting. Right. The truth is, though, that we make a lot of attacks for six or more as the, the hatchet. Because, like, for example, next turn, I mean, next turn is going to be an attack six. This was an attack seven. Like, when do you goggles, you know? I mean, if you're going to long rest, you can goggles on either one of them, but there's no guarantee I'm going to long rest, and it's, again, not a lethal attack. Again, the point is, since we're going to be in combat for a while, we're not likely to long rest, and, I mean, we'll see, I guess, maybe. And accordingly, it's typically going to be better to do it on a time where the damage is going to be important to guarantee. Okay, so here we're actually going to do the top of Barbaric Instincts. We're going to do Shield 1, Pull 1, Range 2, all just enemies suffer 1 damage, we create fire. Hopefully creating fire, no, creating fire doesn't matter. Nope. So I'm going to pull this into here, which is a 6. And then we do one additional damage. And that's it. And then I've got a bottom default move. I'm not going to use the lost move yet, obviously, so I'm just going to chill there. I have no stamina potion to get an initial card back. Okay. We go for 3. No immobilizes because no uh, earth. Flame demons don't move. Sun demon does move, and that is an elite sun demon indeed. So it has 3 movement. One, two, three. And the Void Warden gets her long rest. With which we're going to lose. So I guess Resign Frenzy is looking a little bit less impressive. There's not that many Flame Demons in this room. Hmm. I mean, I definitely want this. Uh, am I arranged to be stunning things? Yeah, I am. Something like this and this looks good next turn. I can't lose this, so the question is just this or this. I guess Revine's Sign Frenzy is probably still better than Signs of the Void here. Signs of the Void. 
There's just not that many enemies clumped up for the shield spikes turns to be that impressive, and the flame demons are just too far away. We'll have to figure out a way to kill them somehow, but I don't think we'll be able to keep that guard until they get here, is basically my point. Alright, uh, so we're going to short rest on the red guard, I think, for sure. Can we ever... I can't really ever pull you into that, can we? I wish we had Lure of the Void still. Oh well. I think I can't lose that card, actually. Specifically, that's going to be really important against the Flame Demons. Hope I don't lose them before. No, that's... I mean, that both of those are actually important against the Flame Demons, but whatever, we had to lose something. I think we kept the better one. Mm, okay. Oh, sorry, the... Sun Demons also did create light. <sighs> okay. So this and this certainly makes sense. We're kind of left with not a great turn afterwards. I still think this makes sense, though. Being able to stun the Earth Demon and make a big attack on it. While also getting poison on it. Oops, let's go here, though. Mm, so what do we do? I guess I could go early and disarm it. I think probably just doing this and this is fine. We'll get a wound on it and a disarm on it. And then the stun being later is actually fine. So we can even do something like this, actually, to go as late as possible to make sure we stun it for next round. And then we can mostly ignore it after that. All right, here goes. Sun Demons, ranged attack. Oh dear god. No, we can consume the light before. <laughs> we don't create light, do we? No, we can even consume it there. <laughs> okay. That's good. That is good. You're doing multi target range attacks without moving, but you don't have line of sight and you are going to disarm, so that's fine. And you are finally moving up, but not very much. Uh, whatever, that's okay. At this point, I don't really care that they move up. All right. So I'm now going to use the bottom of Fancy Hat, add plus one to all my attacks this round, and then I'm going to do Repeat Shot. I gain one experience, because I'm attacking something with a favorite in it. It's this, uh, where is my favorite, by the way? I did put it in, but I just forgot to do the things up here. All right. So this is an attack six. So the question is, is am I going to long rest next round? I don't think so. We're still going to be fighting a Sun Demon to Earth Demons. I don't think I have time to long rest there. If anyone can long rest, it's got to be the Void Warden. I think we just need to keep short resting. So I won't be using the goggles accordingly. All right, so seven. Okay. And we're done. And the Red Guard goes. So in the Red Guard, we're going to make an attack disarm, creating light and or dark and ice, targeting you, the earth demon. Okay, one damage, she's disarmed. Okay, and then we're going to do this. Would I rather keep it for the Void Warden? Do I need the extra damage that much is the question, or do I, can I get the experience? I think I actually do need the damage to kill this off. So, yeah, let's save it for the Void Warden. Oh, I guess we have other elements used in the Void Warden. We can use, for example, the fire on the Void Warden. Yep. I mean, we can also use fire. Whatever, we can use... I guess the ice could do something for us next turn. I want the experience. Whatever. Let's gain an experience. Let's consume the light here to get... Uh, move to attack one wound. Not moving anywhere, but just using that for experience. Again, we have to use the light no matter what. Although the Void Warden could have. So we do two damage on our attack. And wound it. Okay. Flame Demons go. So they have minus one movement. They never have enough range. But minus... Well, I, mean, I guess I shouldn't say that. They have three movement, three range here. One, two, three... One, two, three. Yes, they don't have enough range. Okay, Earth Demons go. Like I said, this one has line of sight on nothing. This one takes one damage from its wound and loses the disarm. Void Warden's up next. So we're going to use the top of Gift of the Void. I guess I don't mind not cursing myself at this point. So I'll use the Dark for that. Oh yeah, they recreated fire. 
think I'm not going to play this loss next turn. So I don't think I should care about keeping this ice around. I mean, I guess it can do direct damage to the flame demons. Did they not already flip that, though? They did already flip that. So yeah. All right. So I'm going to use the top of Gift of the Void. I'm going to make the hatchet suffer two damage. I'm going to poison this at one, two, three range. I guess, yeah. Because I have the dark the old dark which i could use for this since in reality i'm probably not gonna freeze the soul here i probably shouldn't need freeze the soul actually so let's actually let's just use the dark and keep the ice i don't know i mean the ice probably doesn't matter i don't think i'm using i don't think i'm using this as a loss how many turns would that cause me to lose one turn at that point <sighs> is there a world which that could be worth losing one turn no, I don't think so. I don't think it could be worth losing a turn to just do that. So, yeah, let's just use the ice, because there's a world in which we still can still. Okay, so we consume the ice on this attack with Master Influence. Targeting here. Okay, see, there is a world in which we could have to stun it. That Oh, yeah, I don't need to get rid of it. So the attack 5 with disadvantage with advantage does 4 damage. It's 5 because of the poison. Boom. And then we're going to use the bottom of Freeze the Soul. We're going to consume... There was a dark here before because it was created by the... We created dark here, but we're going to use the previous dark from Desert Knight to not get cursed, to do a stun range 3 on the Earth Demon. So now it will die before going. Yes, it should have. You're right. Um, That was my bad. That was my bad. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I was doing that. Okay. Well, then we don't need to use the stun. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I did it like that. Just a little bit tired, I guess. Oh. So there's no need to stun this now. So we can just move up one. I'm not sure that that's a useful move up one, but why not? Okay, now the sun demon goes. It's going to have an attack at four range. I think it already has range. Yes, it does. One, two, three, four. So it doesn't need to move up, which is unfortunate. And it attacks for five with advantage. Okay, well, I'll definitely take that. So three, two, I'll save this for when it can actually deal direct damage. I had no special defensive things up, so I just take two damage here. That's fine. Hmm. Well, in the end, it looks like I may need to long rest the hatchet now, because I don't really have the ability to go up and attack anything, and this is dead. So I could have used the goggles. But this worked out just fine anyway. Alright, we're going to play these two cards. I don't really know what we're going to be doing with them. I think going slightly later is better. It's not like I can rest early. Any turn is worth something here. Um, hmm. So we have fire and dark, right? But we don't have the jump boots. I guess actually, no, hold on. We're not going to long rest on hatchet then. I'm going to short rest. Because I guess Redguard wouldn't be doing anything this turn either unless we come up. So at this point, I think we're just coming up. We have a way to get through. We don't need to stall any longer. So let's short rest here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Um, so we need this spot to be vacated by the red guard. And then from there, we could use follow through to attack. Otherwise, with boots, we can use anything to attack. I think anything is better than follow through. So let's go with this and this. So red guard needs to kill that stupid earth demon. So it sucks that we didn't get a plus one in the end. Because um, we will actually have to just attack it. And we can use the fire to gain shield as we go into the next room. So we're attacking it with probably just this. Save these two cards for next turn. Mm, I mean, I guess... Yeah, because I could heal and do bottom shielding. Yeah, that's probably worth it. I guess otherwise there's a world in which we could just do the bottom to execute and heal ourselves on top instead. But then it would be 32. That wouldn't work to have Hatchet go after us. Yeah, it could, like this. What happens, I guess, if this goes... I mean, this can't move at 46. So actually, yeah, that's fine. That's actually a fine turn, then. 
it's a good opportunity to use this heal, and then we still have something. I mean, the shame is we're leaving that fire on the table. Is that risky because of what these can do with their multi-targets? The multi-target wound? That could be very bad for us. Not having a possibility of getting rid of the fire. If we do a default top attack, what do we do otherwise then? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, this does seem pretty good. It also creates life. I guess, no, this is actually just too dangerous for these reasons. It's too dangerous because it's giving, it's leaving both light and fire up, which is actually not something I want. I mean, technically, I don't have to leave light up, but then I don't get the heal. All right, so let's just go like this. Default top, move, create, or gain shield, and we'll go earlier rather than later to just run up behind the hat. Red Guard, since Red Guard's just going in at this point anyway, I think it doesn't make sense to go later. All right, so what are they up to? Well, they were going to create fire anyways. That wasn't the biggest deal in the world. And they were going to create light anyway and do this. Okay. So red guard's up first. We're just going to use the top of blinding sickle as default attack two here to not be disadvantaged. It's already a three, so anything our deck except a miss kills. Sure, trying a minus one there is fine. Oh, it just... I believe we just lost a health we weren't supposed to there. Or no, maybe we increased health. Well, we're, no, I think we're at nine, right? Yeah. It's annoying when they're on top of each other. It shouldn't allow you to like click on two things at once. If you click on one thing, it shouldn't also register to click somewhere else. I'm pretty sure we were at nine. Yeah, I'm almost positive we were at nine because I was thinking the heal four would be one over heal. Okay. And so then we're going to consume the fire, gain one experience, and do a move four. All right. So let's took it take a look at the ranges here. So four movement, four range for that flame demon, but I guess I also just want it to come up as much as possible. Uh, but I also need space for the hatchet behind me. What if I go here? That would force this to go to like here, for example. Here it wouldn't work. So it would have to go to here. And then this one would have to go to here. It does get them up more, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see Joe. Uh, so, oh, but no, but the multi-target from the flame or the sun demon matters then, because then the hatchet would get hit. So no, I guess we're probably just going to here then. That way, this one. I mean, if the hatchet goes here, and the void warden goes here, which she can because she's boots, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, or just a move three, then this can't multi-target us. So yeah, that's got to be correct. Okay. So let's just do that, go there, and we have one shield. All right, hatchet goes. We're going to do a move one, loot one. We're going to use our boots, get a total of move two here. Because from there, we won't be able to attack. So we go here, we loot both these things. Get the favorite back. But then I'm going to do an attack three, range three with the top of center mass. I'm definitely trying to kill the sun demon before killing this earth demon. There's no doubt about that. I'm throwing the favorite because I've got things like repeat shot and follow through as payoffs after this. So get in there, favorite. And here, can I don't know. I'm going to have two more opportunities to use the goggles. It's not going to change too much either way. Here it's going to be an attack 6. Later I'm also going to do an attack 6. I guess damage sooner is going to be better than damage later. So I suppose, yeah, at the same time we've also drawn sort of reasonably from our deck thus far. All right, let's goggles him. I think we also have a bless in our deck too, which would be amazing here. So let's hit him. Hit him! <sighs> of course. Whatever. Five damage, we'll take it. Okay, so now the flame demons go. We're going to recreate fire. Uh, this one to hit us needs to go to here. Yep. That's range four and attacks for three. We have one shield. But we've also got some shield items. So that's four. I'm going to save the shield items I can save for the sun demon. So that's two damage. I'll take it in a second. Jeez. And that's three damage. Sort of crazy flips again. All right. Not a lot we could do about that. All right. So the Void Warden's up next. The range three. So move three. One, two, three. All right. Yep. 
Void Warden going out like a champ. Sadly, we're going to fail that. I'm, I'm rubbing my hands together, both from excitement, also because they're freezing, to be fair. We're going to fail this battle roll, but uh, it sort of is what it is here. All right, so we're going to use the bottom of Suggestion as a move three, plus our boots to go four total here. I'm going to consume the dark. So we get move four. One, two, three, four to here. Uh, we're going to throw out a curse. Doesn't matter who we target. This doesn't matter for this item. Okay. And then we're going to use the top of Resign Frenzy, gaining two experience. Uh, force all enemies within range three to perform attack two, targeting enemies of your choice adjacent to them. Sadly, this and this attack nothing, but this and this attack each other. And this are just executes on both of them because they have three retaliate. Technically, I have to make these attacks. Uh, the first one also gets advantage. I'm not going to consume... Uh, I guess I don't use fire next time. I mean, they're also just going to be dead, so there's no real reason to consume them. I guess these could do like any element converting into their things. I mean, they're also just creating their elements, so no, there's really no reason to consume the fire here. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. We'll do the first one with advantage there and the second one there. These attacks literally don't matter at all, but I guess I can get some curses out of my deck. Yeah, no. So it sucks because originally if I hadn't messed up my deck, I actually would have gotten the curses. Anyway, so the first attack does no damage, I think. The second attack does no damage. Oh. This is actually sort of weird. No, so these actually, it should, ah, that was my bad. Oh, man. Well, these actually should have, oh, no, 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 well, all right. Actually, what should happen here, hold on, hold up is this. The first one should be, I think this is how it works. It's a little bit weird because it's targeting adjacent to them. So in my mind, it functioned like a melee attack, but I guess it's still actually a ranged attack from them. This is sort of strange that it's like a ranged attack that's forced melee range, but I, I'm pretty positive that they should be still be ranged attacks. So actually what should have happened is the first one should have had advantage and disadvantage, so it should have been just nothing. And the second one should be like this. And now we should, I mean, in the end, it should actually end up the exact same. The attacks do nothing. It doesn't really matter. And our deck still gets reshuffled after drawing a miss. I believe this is the correct interpretation of this. So again, this does zero damage. This does zero damage because they have three shield. It's a melee attack now, targeting adjacent. So that's what I wonder. I mean, I guess you're right. So I also thought it was a melee attack. But at the same time, when you make ranged things perform attacks, they do still, there are still ranged attacks. You're right that the targeting adjacent makes it weirder. That that's that's why I originally thought it was a, range, a melee attack, but now I was second guessing myself, thinking that it should be ranged because they're still just innately ranged. Because technically, targeting something adjacent to you doesn't make it a ranged attack. A ranged, I mean, a melee attack. A ranged enemy can still perform a melee. A ranged, a ranged enemy can still perform a ranged attack targeting something adjacent to them. Because just so we're clear, if this didn't say targeting enemies of your choice adjacent to them, it would it would 100% always be ranged attacks, right? Just from FAQ, attack X replaces the figure's base ability, so it is a melee attack unless range plus X is specified or otherwise noted. Interesting. Okay. That's weird. That's actually not at all how I thought that worked. In fact, that I'm pretty sure that's not how that's always worked. Was that a... Yeah, but I guess there's no FAQ for Jaws of the Lion. All right, well, so then it is... Regardless, the outcome is exactly the same. We flipped the exact same three cards. The attacks never deal any damage, but it's good to know that going forward, so now I know. So if a range isn't specified on the attack itself, then it actually does make melee attacks. Regardless, thank you very much, uh, Wilrem. I appreciate that. Regardless, they both die from the each other's retaliates. Oh, no! Only one of them dies. Crap, I need to replace the second one. No, because the first one dies and the second one doesn't get to attack, so that actually makes this so much less good. Crap, 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 crap. Oh, man. Well, whatever. I mean, basically, we played a loss to execute a Flame Demon. It's still worth it. All right, get the Flame Demon back out there. So I actually shouldn't have flipped the second attack. So the first one would have been an advantage, and this still remains in my deck. Well, that's a worse outcome. Um, I could have chosen which one gets executed. Yeah. I was so much more excited about this. I imagine them both attacking each other at the same time, but that's actually not how it works. That's such a shame. I still think playing a loss in the Void Warden to execute one of these is worth it. We only lose one turn. Um, also, by coming here, we actually block this from attacking. 
Oh no, we had to go here. No, we're not blocking this from attacking. Oh god, I didn't. Even, I forgot completely. Oh no, I've made so many mistakes here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, well, whatever. This one stays here then. There's no coin there. This doesn't do anything. This is lost. Yeah, we, we made multiple. I was so excited, and I did so much wrong. Yeah, you do need the elite exactly. And this is really bad because now this is hitting both of us. I was thinking, yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna block him from. I mean, I guess no. So I'm just gonna tank the attack now. That that was my initial plan, and then I was like, well, then I can go invis. And now I realize, no, I can't go invis. So we're chilling here. I guess we're not gonna get another turn. So that was definitely not worth. Well, I mean, it was sort of worth. I don't know. I guess it depends how this attack turns out. Most likely, if we if we have to negate damage here, then it wasn't worth because then we actually lost two turns. Well, hold on. If we hadn't played... A, no. Yeah. We lost two turns, right? Because we were just supposed to go down to three cards there, so we'd have two turns left. Basically, we played an Execute to lose one turn, which was worth, I think, but now, considering that we're going to have to tank this attack... I mean, at the same time, we're also negating... Like, the Red Guard would have had to lose a card. I don't know, so maybe it is still worth. It's actually tough to say, because the Red Guard getting hit by the Sun Demon was also going to be really bad for us. So I don't know. So maybe this is fine. Okay, so the Sun Demon goes, creates light. Attacks here, because it can't hit this and another target, since we didn't go invis. If we went invis, it was just so much worse, because the Sun Demon is going here and hitting both of them. All right, uh, so we really just want a minus one average. Hard to ask for, but there are some curses in their deck. That's not a minus one average. <laughs> that is very much not a minus one. Um, okay. So we have to lose two cards. Doesn't really change anything whether we lose two cards or not. We're exhausting here no matter what. Okay, then the Earth Demon goes. It's hitting at plus one, which is pretty unfortunate. And it's going to attack the Red Guard. So here we really need to see a minus one. So it's creating Earth. So it attacks normally for four, plus one here for five. No, I guess we still have two shield. Okay, so we just have to see a plus zero. Okay. It's sort of all right. We had one and eight shield because we played Flame Shroud this turn, and we have one shield from this. So an attack five becomes three, and we get two retaliate here. All right. Well, we're really living on the edge here, and we weren't long resting there. And we're playing these two cards. We are exhausted, which means this has failed. And this is still, yeah, well, probably something we... Probably something we'll succeed at if we win. All right, so we're down to two characters. We're down to three enemies. Two characters should be able to manage three enemies, although this is not... It's not just any three enemies. It's elite Sun Demon. Elite level four Sun Demon against level two characters, so... You know, sort of is what it is. All right, let's just do the biggest attack right away, which is this one. Oh, sorry, I actually have to do this properly, right? There we go. Now it won't ask me about her anymore. I believe... Yeah, we're in a precarious spot here. Oh, uh, what the hell? Man. Really? It's going to do that? Maybe if I go down here and fix this? Should be fine. Okay, good. Oh no, that's that's the thing that couldn't have. Oh, all right, they have to draw a curse or a miss here. Basically, all right, let me talk talk through this because I was doing this entire thing in my head. I was thinking, all right, sixteen initiative, flame demons. At this point, they can only attack me at three before I go to the best of my knowledge. They have the 30 left. I don't even know what... They have the 30 left, the 8 left, where they don't even attack, and one other card, which maybe it's just two 30s. I actually don't remember what their other reshuffle is. I think maybe it's just like a later initiative attack. I'm not actually sure. And I believe the Sun Demons can't attack before 16 either, to the best of my knowledge. Earth Demons definitely can't, I guess. Let's just double check this. I'm pretty positive I'm right about this, though. Yeah. They actually just don't have the possibility to do this. So the Sun Demons never. 46 AoE. Oh, the, the line? Oh, what is the AOE? Hmm, I don't remember what it is. We'll see. Oops. I guess it's like a 3-hex AOE? I don't really remember that one. 
This doesn't come up that much. Oh, seven hex of fire. Yep, 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 yep. Good call. Yeah. So it's the five. It's the three hex flamethrower, seven hex of fire. No, that that's windings. Yeah, it's, it's just the single target, seven hex of fire. Yeah, good call. That's it. So yeah, so that's the three cards that they have left. So there's actually only one out of four cards, which is really bad for us because it's this and goes before us. Otherwise, generally speaking, they're literally not capable of attacking before 16 initiative, except with this card. But admittedly, like I said, here it is actually one out of four. I don't think it made sense to short rest early. Additionally, short rest is really sort of dangerous for us right here because we can't even reroll. But this is obviously worse because now it gets to hit us before and we basically... So we have two curses, a miss, and a minus two in their deck. And they have to draw one of these things so that we don't have... Otherwise, we have to lose two cards when we're discarded. And then we're almost certainly not completing the scenario successfully. <sighs> Man, it has just been bad flip after bad flip in the scenario. All right. One, two, three, four. Well, here goes. One time. Oops. And of course, I clicked twice accidentally. No. Man, we have just I've really gotten brutalized by flips in this scenario. All right. So if only I had just been able to survive for one more round to absorb this attack. We have to lose two cards from our discard. So we have two turns left on the red card after this. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. I don't think. I mean, Hatchet has a lot of turns left, so who knows. All right. Um... How much do I care about a disarm? I mean, basically my goal is, this is also healing itself, is to kill this over two turns. I think I can't spend turns disarming anymore. That's a given. And I suppose I really do need direct damage. I don't even know how we're supposed to kill this. If theoretically I go here next turn, I pull this and damage both of them. What's the Earth Demon doing? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably fine. I think keeping that is worth it. It also can theoretically be a wound, which is not bad. Let's get rid of this. Keep these two. Man. So brutal. <sighs> okay, new fire. Hatchet's up. We're going to add plus one to all our attacks this round. We're going to attack with a repeat shot, gain one experience, and get... So this is just going to be an attack six here. One, two, three, range. It's incredible because I'm like, yeah, all right, you know. So I, I don't use the goggles, I miss. I use the goggles, draw two plus zeros, and then I don't use the goggles because now I've used them and I get a minus two. I can't believe it. Three damage. <sighs> this is just... Man. Sometimes it do be like this. Gain one experience. Heal myself for four. I'm going to move to here. If I go here, then he's going to hit the uh, hatchet. I'd rather him be hitting the red guard at this point, I think. I guess we don't have any shield here. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, I have one shield. Yeah, so I get one retaliate damage. Additionally, the red guard's going to exhaust soon anyway. It's kind of like solo hatchet carry, so... Redguard's health is going to be a little less valuable at this point. All right. Sun Demon. Oh, no. I guess there's two more healing there, but that still matters. Heals all of them. Consumes the light. And we're up on Earth Demon. Earth Demon is going to consume an element of our choice. Um, I do want fire next round. So I guess I'm going to consume the... So this is gone. I'm going to consume the earth to create earth. And he's going to make an attack three, targeting the red guard. So two. So we take one. He takes one retaliate. Okay. Well, we're going to play these cards. we got a short rest for sure. Yeah, I don't think I can long rest. I just die before I ever get to go if I do that. All right. Two turns left. Again, this turn certainly makes sense. One of our best ways of damaging the Flame Demon. <sighs> Problem is, he's most likely going to do the stupid multi-target wound at this point, but... Hmm. Could I do better then? Could I, myself, wound the... Like a wound attack? And attack multiple things with this? No. I mean, theoretically, I could just leave this, because once I pick up the favorite from here, an attack 6 with advantage does just kill this normally. So maybe damaging that isn't very valuable. 
But this also stacks up a bunch of shield. I think no matter what I'm supposed to play these cards, we'll see what happens. Yeah, of course you would do this one. Of course you would do this one. This is just so bad because we're going to get wound on the hatchet, which we aren't capable of getting rid of. I mean, I guess we're just going to long rest next round. It's just bad flip after bad flip after bad flip. This is incredible. It's actually incredible that this is happening. All right. So, what can we do here? What are you up to? Healing. I don't love that either. Because I need you to take damage. I actually kind of wanted you to attack. You also have Earth, so you're going to mobilize. I guess we are really just long resting then. Next turn on Hatchet. Okay. Um, hmm. In that case, do I want a wound on you and just a default attack? Or do I want a bunch of shield? I think I want a bunch of shield to just try to absorb this attack as well. All right. So also, I guess I can't leave you fire. Oh, but I'm, cre I'm creating fire. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm just not direct damaging the flame demon then. This is such a bad flip. Like, the other reshuffle flip is fine, because I don't care about the AoE attack here. I also think they don't move on the other one, right? Yeah, they don't move. This would have been so good for me. That would have been incredible, actually. And even if they done... Like, to be honest, this was... So this was actually worse flip out of four into worse flip out of three. Because if they'd done the thing where they don't attack for the turn, that's also just fine. It doesn't affect me in any way. I mean, like, obviously the best case for me is that they flip this, because then I would be able to go here, pull him there, and get him to retaliate himself for a bunch. I mean, actually just execute him. Because the one damage plus the two damage from my two shield, yeah. So that would have been amazing. And then them doing the other thing was fine. And so, yeah, this is actually worse flip into worse flip at four and three. Okay. Uh, so I can't go here, pull him there with the fire, because then I'm just going to die. So what I need to do instead... So at that point, we get back to the question if the wound is more valuable. The problem is that Sun Demons are just too likely to heal. They have two ways of healing. So the wound just doesn't do much, and the Earth Demon is actually healing this turn. So I still think the stacking shield and doing direct damage is better. I just don't get to go next to the Flame Demon in the end. So, which obviously makes it worse. Um, so I want to pull you at all. I don't know how valuable that actually is. I don't know that it changes anything. If I put you here, can I do anything else interesting with you afterwards? No, not particularly. So tell me, I guess, why not? I guess I should consider my... No, but I'm just going invis with the hatchet here after this nonsense. This can go here. I guess if I go here, it forces this where? Just here? Is that any better? No, I think I would rather have it go here. Okay, so we're going to stay where we are. We're going to use the bottom here, consuming the fire. Gaining one experience. Um, getting a shield. And then we're going to use this top. Could pull the flame demon to toss one damage on it. The problem with pulling the flame demon to toss damage on it is the fact that I'm, I have to... I, to be clear, I, I want to pull the flame demon to toss one damage on it. Absolutely. The issue is that I have to create fire if I do that, and if I do that, I'm going to suffer two direct damage from him, which means I have to pitch a card to the Sun Demon, almost certainly, and then I never get another turn. Here, unless the flame, Sun Demon gets plus one, I actually get another turn, which I think is more valuable than doing one direct damage to the, sun, the Flame Demon. To be clear, if this didn't create fire, I would absolutely pull the Flame Demon and do damage to him. Yeah. It's true that you almost never think about this because it doesn't come up very much, but here it actually does matter. Yeah, this flip is so... So stupid. I mean, it's so crazy. Anyway. <sighs> Serenity now. Insanity later. So we do one direct damage to both of these, and we have two shield. And we're done. All right. Flame Demon goes. I guess we're probably having... Actually, I guess we're almost like certainly not getting another turn, because we're going to get the wound. Uh, I don't know. I mean, worst case scenario, we can at least tank a hit. All right, so this is going to go to here, and it's going to attack the red guard, and then the hatchet with this flip. Where's the red guard? <laughs> I just can't even. I. 
man, I'm going to lose it. I really am going to lose it. To be clear, this was an attack one into someone with two shield, and this is where we flip the curse. <sighs> then on the hatchet. I don't... I don't even. I can't even. This is just like everything as bad as possible over and over and over and over again. Not as bad as possible, but kind of close. I mean, like, obviously they're... A plus two is worse. A crit is actually <laughs> the exact same thing. Because it's just an attack one. I don't even know. All right. Hatchet's up. Take one from our wound. Can we just flip well here on this attack, please? Uh, I have no wind. I just get to make an attack four. Gain one experience. Targeting the Sun Demon. Okay, well, that does a flip, a good flip. So four is six, it is one shield, so five. And then here. Do I want to, like, where, basically, where do I want to be after this? Because I'm going to go invisible no matter what here. Mm. I guess being here is probably better, because then after I kill this, I can retrieval it. Just with a move one. I guess accordingly, it probably makes... No, because I have I want to attack this and retrieval it. Yep, I want to go there, and I'm going to use my Cloak of Invisibility here. Okay, so the Sun Demon attacks the Red Guard, creates light. All right. Attacks with advantage. Okay, well... In a way, that works. It takes two damage from the Retaliate. In a way, this works. It actually doesn't really do anything in the end. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything in the end. Alright, uh, Earth Demon immobilizes the Red Guard and heals itself again. Because now we have one life. So what we can, the only thing we can do here, yeah, if we short rest, we can't go. So we can long rest, but absorbing an attack for the round doesn't actually do anything. I mean, I guess it does, because Hatchet... Oh, no, no, because we're long resting on Hatchet, for sure, here. Because we it's the only way we get rid of this wound. That's, such, that's just such a bullshit turn. I swear to God, if this heals this turn, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. All right. Uh, I mean, whatever. It doesn't really... I'm not sure there's anything to be... Is there any difference between short resting and just immediately exhausting or long resting? Is there anything to be gained by making them attack? No, not really, because I guess they have a curse in their deck, so letting them attack is actually worse. What if they draw on this far? Yeah, I think letting them attack is worse. They can't take any retaliate. I have no way of getting any innate shield here. Yeah, there's nothing to be gained, so I'll just short rest and exhaust. Alright, I'm out. And hatchet kill three enemies by himself. That's a pretty strong class. I don't think that's strong. I don't know. I mean, we still had so many chances to win this, I think. It was just these flips were incredible. Um Okay. Sure. So the flame demon well, literally nothing does anything here. The flame demon does make a trap and consumes the light to make fire. So goodbye light, create earth, create fire, and create a trap. Whatever. There we go. Alright, we suffer one from the wound, and we heal two. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we can do this. Oh no, we get to choose. Oops. I guess we can just play with this in our hand at this point. So, we need to keep retrieval, we need to keep all our big attacks. I theoretically want Fancy Hat to go early and kill this. This is so tough because I, I kind of have to get... I can't get hit. I basically can never get hit by this is the problem. How do I avoid that? I mean, basically I need him to flip the thing where he heals this turn, essentially. 
Even if he flips minus one movement, he still makes it to me. So the thing is, like, I have to pick up the the favorite this turn is the issue. I mean, like, yeah, I could use like this to immobilize him, but that's not any. But then it's just the same thing, losing a card. So I don't actually have to have retrieval. I'm not actually sure how much how important retrieval is. No, it is because I have to attack the flame demon. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's always stopping power here. But anyway, the, the bigger issue is I'm just trying to figure out what I do for this turn. I think the answer is I'm boned. <sighs> okay. What have we drawn from our deck already? I'm sure all of our negative modifiers right now. We still have the minus one in our deck. All right, so I actually do have to use repeat shot to attack the sun demon. And I think I just have to go as early as possible to not take any risks. And I'm just going to have to default move there and hope that I get lucky here. Again? Whatever. I mean, I guess it's fine. It was always going to get to go after me. Could it just for once do, like, I don't know, something which doesn't matter? Whatever. Okay, so it recreates fire. I guess it could be worse. It could be worse. Whatever. Attacks me. I take two. Earth demons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at some point I can abandon the favorite, but the problem is I need the favorite to kill the flame demon, right? So no matter what, the issue is I have to... I have to kill this and this first always, because this is one attack, this is one attack, and then this I have to play with for a while. So that's why, like, there, there wasn't really any line here other than just attack, kill this, grab the favorite to be able to kill this next turn. Because the problem is it's just too likely that this attacks me every turn, and I don't have enough life to survive that. I just have to hope that... I mean, I either have to hope that this misses me, or that this wasn't going to attack for the round, which obviously, like, that's a lot to hope for, but from the spot I'm in, I don't think I have better lines than that. Because I, I have to, like, I can't run back this turn, otherwise I never kill this. Because without the favorite, I can't kill it. Okay, so I'm going to make an attack 3, gain 1 experience. I'm not going to use Fancy Hat to gain plus 1 attack here. Only a miss fails to kill this. Oh, I actually do have all my items refreshed. I actually can't use the goggles yet, though. Um, even a minus one kills here, I actually have to save the goggles for when I attack this, because this has to do six damage. With It's going to be an attack six on something with effectively six. So basically the difference is here, a minus one is fine. Here, a minus one is not fine. So I have to save the goggles for my next attack. So an attack five on something with three health and one shield, the elite sun demon. Hilarious. Okay, favorite drops there, and then I have to... So the Earth Demon has plus one movement. Yeah, he's reaching me no matter what. All right, we're going here. Grabbing this and this. So to be clear, I'm, I'm super happy that I played on plus three because this has been extremely close. I think we've gotten, ex I mean, not exceptionally, quite unlucky, and we're still very close to having enough to win this. So if we played on plus two, it would have been too boring. So I'm definitely happy with my choice. It just sucks that sometimes you get unlucky and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't think I could have... In general, I mean, I made one or two mistakes, but I don't think... I mean, I, I basically corrected them. I don't know. I don't think it was possible to play around the stuff that happened. Or to... Ex I mean, I don't know. I guess it was possible if I'd known it was coming, of course. But I don't have a Diviner on this party. Okay. Uh, Sun Demon's gone. Earth Demon goes. So I just... I mean, the Earth Demon has to... Has to miss here. Yeah, the issue is losing a card here. But yeah, maybe. You might be right. Maybe even losing a card here, I can still win. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so... He attacks, please. No. All right, so we have to negate. Um, yeah, I mean, we just have to get rid of Retrieval at this point. Now, if we get rid of Retrieval, we can never pick up the favorite here, where it's going to be on these coals. So I think it's just follow through that I have. follow through is no I because I, I need this and this exactly like I have to have this and this card next turn so I actually have to lose retrieval and just abandon the favorite and just hope that regular attack threes will be enough and pushes and stuff like that those curses have not done anything for me yep exactly as General CGO said reducing retrieval is the only way that I survive all right I just need him to. I don't even know. It doesn't even really matter at this point. He's already flipped all the early stuff. Yeah, sure.
Can, can we be real for a second here? <sighs> I don't... Like... This is unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. So this is the worst thing. Like, to be clear, yeah, it would have been great if they didn't attack next last turn. Even a ranged attack would have been fine last turn, whatever. Instead, they flipped just standard stuff and then this and i mean this this is the only thing that matters this turn. i mean whatever them healing it's kind of okay at least i would still survive and have a chance this actually just ends the scenario this is just i mean whatever now it has to miss like the only way when the scenario is if it misses to be clear there's a curse and a miss in the deck i'm honestly gonna lose here this is just all right at this point i'm going into exceptionally unlucky territory uh, so I have to move away first. There's really no way around this. I can't let the Flame Demon live because it's still... It's also going to hit me for four. And it can always reach me. It's not like I can get far enough away. So let's do it. You've got to move two, push two, target one adjacent enemy. So one, two, like this. And I guess at this point I'm just going to do this. Because it's not moving anyway, so I'd rather just have more damage on it. And after that, just kite it. And then I'm going to attack the Flame Demon with Center Mass. I'm going to use the Goggles here because this is going to be with... So I'm throwing the Favorite. It's back. I picked it up last turn, but yeah. It's going to stay here for the rest of the scenario anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm throwing the Favorite. This is an Attack 6. Yeah, every time. And whatever, that's all we needed, so that's fine. All right, that's dead. Plus two negatives, I swear to God. Uh, okay, well... This is an attack for four, so this has to be a minus two. So we have a minus two, a curse, and a miss in their deck. Three out of 14. I mean, they've gotten so many flips like this. At this point, we just have to hope for one. Not even. That's that's the game. That's it. There's no way around that. I don't know. I'm, I'm really disgusted at this point by the luck that I had this scenario. This was, this was truly unbelievable. It's really a shame. Whatever. Whatever. That's... That's game. Sometimes it goes that way. <laughs> like I said, I'm... I'm happy to lose sometimes. Admittedly, the way that we lost here does leave a bad taste, I think. It it felt like we were really on, like, the... I don't know. Bottom. Would they have pulled at disadvantage? Ah. <laughs> to be clear, I guess the minus two was already out of their decks. Actually, I was wrong. We only had two. We had a one and seven there. Although, again, earlier we got like a really bad one of eight. So, okay, let's restart. Yeah, sadly, it is too late. Again, I my my guarantee is that I always do two scenarios on Friday, and we did do two scenarios. I can't redo it. It's a shame that I didn't go for the chest in the end. I think it was correct not to go for the chest. It does really seem like we had a very real possibility of beating this room. But then, I don't know. I mean, my turn with the Void Warden was kind of a mess up. It, it, that wasn't enough of a difference, though, even if I'd kind of done that a little bit differently. I don't know. Also, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If I didn't go do that with the Void Warden, if I didn't go tank the hit, then... Like, I basically tanked the hit and executed here. If I didn't tank the hit, the Sun Demon was hitting the Red Guard, and we probably just would have lost sooner, I think. So actually, I think the Void Warden turn was fine. I don't know. I think we were probably in the bottom, like, 2 percentile in terms of outcomes here, based on, like, flips between the second and third rooms. Or I guess just on the scenario on average. Also the first room, the fact that they attacked before we went to, yeah, it was just overall really bad luck. Which is a shame. But again, that does indicate that we're playing at the right difficulty of plus three. So that's good. And again, we'll we'll get another chance at some point in the future. It's fine that we lose some... Like I said, I, I'm happy to lose scenarios sometimes. I hate for it to go like this because I feel like we should have won this scenario still. And we just kind of got lucked out. But yeah. Uh, okay, so let's clean up afterwards. So we just got six experience, 11 experience, six experience. Okay. Ah, we're going to get a level. All right, well, at least we got something left to do here. So six, 11, and six. And then for gold, 
these were, were three each, if I'm not mistaken, still, because it was four, but really three, yep, still three each. So we had six, two, three, and one. Uh, so 18, so 36. Six here puts us to 74. And eight. Mm. All right. Ugh. Sorry. Oh, my back. Slack's getting old. Um, okay, so then the only other thing we have to do at the end here is, yeah, just to get our level up on the Void Warden quickly. So we'll do that, and then we'll be done. So, level three for the Void Warden. We've got Commanding Presence and Taunting Fate. Uh, let's just get rid of all this stuff. So Taunting Fate is a heal six, range two, shuffle one, bless card into the monster, attack modifier deck. So again, because we have an Iron Helmet on our tank, maybe we will pick up an Iron Helmet ourselves. If I had an Iron Helmet, I might have won this scenario, actually, so it's not a small thing. We would have taken two less damage that turn, but I guess the next thing was a plus one, and then the wound. No, I guess it wouldn't have changed. I'm not sure if it would have changed anything. Maybe it would have. Maybe it would have. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so this is a heal six range two. It shuffles a bless into the monster deck, which is sort of fine, the shuffling a bless in, right? Assuming that they attack the red guard, it's fine. If attack, too many attacks hit people other than the Red Guard is risky, obviously. Um, adding zeros into their deck is sort of okay. Since you add curses, adding zeros isn't great, but it's still not that bad. It still has a heal 6 range too. It's also just a 13 initiative card. Uh, meanwhile, the bottom is next time you grant an attack this turn, at plus 1 to the entire attack action. And if consume ice, it's plus 2 instead. And then all attacks targeting you add plus 2 attack this round. This card cannot be discarded before the end of round. Um, I think people significantly under or overrate the bottom here just because it's flashy. It's really only good with uh, Resign Frenzy, which, like, yeah, sometimes you play Resign Frenzy top, but you don't play it. There, there are more scenarios where you're not going to play Resign Frenzy top than when you do just because the initiative and the bottom movement are so good um, that, yeah, this is just... Otherwise, it adds plus one typically to your attack, plus two if you've gotten the thing to create ice specifically for it, but we'll get into that shortly. And, um, yeah, that's just not that valuable. Most of the time it's going to be plus one. A lot of times you also want to move or be playing, like, you either have a stun on bottom or you can move. Or like, sorry, how to put this. Because your best bottom action plus two is clutch in certain moments. I mean, yeah, it is, but it's also like, how to put this. You have a stun on bottom. So a lot of the time on bottom, if you're not going to be using the stun, you want to be moving to put yourself in position to use the stun on bottom. So you don't have so much freedom, especially because of the range restrictions. Like basically for Gift of the Void, you have to be adjacent allies. And for uh, Wicked Scratch, you only have range two. So you certainly have some range restrictions in order to make your gifted attacks work. So a lot of the times you actually have to move even just to make to be able to use them. And when you don't have to move to use them, a lot of times you want to be stunning. So I still think that this is, I mean, we'll see. But I, I think this bottom is not very good. Um, I think it's okay, I guess. Ultimately, though, it is a move to with 13 initiative, which is fine, because you really want initiatives. Controversial opinion, the sun is too limiting, so I don't use it. Well, that's also because I think you play around this, so you don't take uh, give and take at level 2, so you take the ice thing at level 2, because you want to use Taunting Fate. I think if you take the level 2 card, it's much easier to use the sun, because you can use that top with the sun bottom. Again, I mean, like, I understand the argument that the sun's limiting, but I've used the sun so much the scenario and so much almost every scenario to great effect i mean it's still perverse edge sort of like obviously without the initiative um i think it makes more sense to try to enable the stun than to avoid the stun i think the stun is still the single strongest action this class has up through level three to be clear i mean single strongest non-loss action this class has up through level three i don't think anything else really compares gift of the void i guess is close but obviously the two health is still really it's still an actual cost but yeah uh so anyway this will also make the sun easier because this gives us a heal on top that we can use for initiative. Regardless, I think we're, I mean, we're going to try Taunting Fate now. I mean, Commanding Presence sucks. This card is just unplayable. Um, I guess I should read it. So, at the start of your next five turns, one ally within range of three will perform an attack two action. This is extremely underwhelming for a loss because some number of these are going to be wasted and then they're just attack twos. I mean, admittedly, they're like attack threes because of um, if you have elements and they have advantage. But you also saw in some number of those turns would be using Master Influence for something else anyway. I mean, I guess it works per card, so it still kind of works, but I don't know. Even considering, like, you also have to play Master Influence, you have to play this, and a lot of times it's not going to work. I don't know. This this seems like 
extremely difficult to be consistent. And even then, what you're getting from it is not very good. The bottom is a move four curse, self ignore the curse, one ally with a range three, move four, move three. This is sort of okay. I mean, I guess theoretically this plays into the like uh, the build where you just want to put all the curses into your deck if you're facing monsters that curse, so your allies can't get curses. And in which case, that bottom is actually fine because a move four that allows an ally to move three is actually a good action, um, assuming the curse isn't a negative. The curse here is a negative though, typically, and we don't have dark enough or free dark enough to make this just never exist. So yeah, Commanding Presence sucks. Uh, last time what I took was I took Give and Take at 2 and then Crushing Cold at 3. Um, I ended up just basically never using Crushing Cold. I think this card's terrible. Again, the only argument for using this card, as people pointed out, is basically you, people take this so that they can use this, but I don't I don't think, I think the, of taking this card, the action that I'm going to use the least is actually the bottom action. I think this card is most often going to be used for a move to with 13 initiative, followed by the top heal, followed by the bottom action. Accordingly, I don't want to take a bad level 2 card just to make this bottom action slightly better. Uh, so accordingly, yeah, Crushing Gold sucks. I mean, taking Crushing Gold now is what I tried before, and I don't recommend it, because you just don't need an 86 initiative on this class. You want fast initiatives, and nothing about this bottom is really appealing. You have better, like, you have move threes or move fours with good initiatives. And to be clear here, I do say good initiative, because 86 is not a good initiative for this class. Anytime you want to go late with this class, basically, you can. You always have Gift of the Void. Theoretically, you have Master Influence, so. So, yeah, anyway, I think, I think at level 3, you should always take this. I guess... Yeah, no No matter what, at level 3, you should just always take this card, actually. No matter what. Because theoretically, if you're doing this nonsense with Crushing Cold, which I think is bad, but whatever. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see how much we end up using the bottom and how much it would have been better to have Crushing Cold, now that we're going to actually experience this. But I think if you took Crushing Cold at 2, you take this card at 3. And if you took Sav it, or uh, Give and Take at 2, you take this card at 3. So I don't think it's ever like I don't think there's ever another choice here. Um, I think either you take either level two card. I mean, I, I think it should be give, give and take because again, the initiative to make the sun better is so important. But um, even if it's not, I think it should be this no matter what at level three. And I don't think you should ever take this card again unless you're trying like four player party and you're trying to steal all the curses, which is sort of an interesting thing to do. And I guess like I wouldn't fault for someone for trying that strategy, which I guess is the only reason you should ever take this. Okay, so we take taunting fate. So that we can give it a try. Again, I, I think Taunting Face is going to be a fine card, to be clear. Um, and we're at 8 gold, so we have nothing else to do with money. Oh, we get to grab a perk, though, which is nice. I mean, sort of nice. We'll be nicer once we get to level 4. So we're going to go take another one of these. I didn't actually... F I mean, I guess I basically never used my modifier deck, so... Yeah, I, I mean, getting negative cards out of our deck seems good. And I actually really like these. Like, we make enough advantage attacks that I would rather have another good deck like, remove a bad and put a good into my deck, rather than just remove a bad, because the minus two a lot of times isn't going to matter. Now, it can, because we can draw a curse in it, because we curse ourselves a fair amount, but still. I think I prefer to do it this way, and in general, I've really liked the... I won't take these out yet, I can do that afterwards. I guess I can do the scenario loss thing at some point, too, which I will do. In general, I've really liked the heal ally modifiers. I found them to be very useful. There's a big difference between heal, like the Tinker is heal self and support having heal ally. Heal ally at any range, too, is quite good, I think. It so often can just remove annoying status conditions or add free healing here and there, which is just a nice thing to have. So I really I really like these modifiers, and I generally think this is the correct way to go about things. Again, for like a more standard modifier deck, you'd be maybe more inclined to do this and then this, which I think would be normal, but again, or for a standard character, but because so many of our attacks have advantage, um, although I guess not that many, because we also don't make a lot of advantage attacks when we actually use our modifier deck, so I don't know. Ultimately, I really think you could do this or this first. I really like this, though. I think this is actually better. Um, but again, I think it would also be reasonable to do this, this, and then this. Regardless, it should always be this. Uh, it should always be this first, and then some combination of these three. Okay. That's it for today and this week. Uh, unfortunate to go out of loss, but that only gives us more motivation to come back next week and do better. Uh, I don't know if we'll actually do this scenario again next week to start. We might like do a different scenario and then do this one. We might just not even do this one anymore. We'll see. We'll figure something out next week. Um, I guess no matter what, I can cut the VOD here. To all the VOD people, uh, take care. See you soon.